What is going on, everybody? It is episode 571 of Pop Culture Crisis. My name is Brett, and I am here once again on this amazing Monday afternoon with my co-host. Would you introduce yourself, please? Hi, Crisis Actors. It's Mary. I don't know if it's an amazing afternoon. I'm speaking but, into existence. Okay. Okay, I'm We're speaking both into feeling existence. a little bit scatterbrained today. I hope that all of you enjoyed your weekend and your St. Patty's Day. I hope you got lit. Did I saw, you? Uh, yeah, you know me. I just got I just got wasted on yeah. St. Patrick's Day. That's me. Yeah. That's me. I just, I just went on the pub, the pub crawl to end all pub crawls. Mm-hmm. No, I went uh, I went skating for a couple of hours and then uh, and then literally no, I did not get in. No drinking, no nothing. I did see a bunch of great memes though about uh, my culture is not your costume, um, showing various people who are not <laughs> Irish. <laughs> Well, they need to put some respect what on did, Ireland's name. What did you do? Do you do something special for for? No, no. <laughs> I, just, I was just did you, you know walking around and did then you I went. just hoist a Guinness and just drink it all in one. No, no, no. <laughs> no. Do you drink? I don't. I don't do. I don't do drinking alone. I don't do that. Do you? Do you drink personally. Guinness? Do you drink dark liquor? I don't dr- drink beer at all in okay. any form. Okay. I, don't, I don't know why. It just never appealed to me. Yeah. All right. Well, you know, uh, you're. A, I think they'd say you're a shame unto your ancestors then for not going out. And <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> it is what it is. Guys, uh, yes. Happy uh, belated St. Patrick's Day. But we got a bunch of stuff to get into today. It's going to be a lot of fun. But before we do, would you hit the like button on this video and subscribe to this channel if you have not done so already? Please and thank you. Share this video with your friends so more people can come in here and hang out. We had uh, we had some good channel growth over the weekend, which is always fantastic to see. So I hope more people can come in here, watch live, and, and really get a, a feel for what it's like to watch the show and not just the segments. Right, so go ahead and do that. Remember, all super chats, twenty dollars and over. We will interrupt the discussion. We will read those super chats right then and there, and then we will do our best to get back on topic, as we always do. Now, what are we going to get into today? Well, first things first. There was an article in the Hollywood Reporter. It was an interview with Gina Carano, to which I had to double take and said, "Why is the Hollywood Reporter covering this?" Because that just felt weird to me. So we get into a lot of details where she kind of, in my opinion, inadvertently calls out uh, Pedro Pascal for being. A a bit disingenuous in how he handles his social media presence in relation to things like trans rights and stuff like that. So we're going to talk about that. We're also going to talk about Johnny Depp, who got an apology from journalist Dan Wooten, and then people on the internet went crazy. Stans on the internet went crazy, so yes. as as they do, as stans have been known to do. So we're going to talk about and that. Then he got mean to he was mean to he's me. been me too but now he's breaking new ground he just got mean to by a that, former co-star hate it when that happens Lola Gladini too who I like so that's that's sad also uh, if you guys are on Twix at all you would have seen over the weekend there was a big hullabaloo going around uh, a former or at least former as far as we know only fans performer named Nala who uh, who seems to have found God and, and repented for her past behavior to which then a bunch of people rammed their elbows in the way to take credit for this and then there's a lot of people calling into question whether they believe for the sincerity of this choice from this young lady I believe you were on a panel with her on whatever yeah that was 10 months ago I went and checked and it feels like longer than that but I have people tagging me in the video and I just didn't really want to post about it until I knew for sure whether she was serious, but I guess we'll, we'll talk about it. We'll talk about that. Also, <clears throat> in other things that you may not have known, did you know that Lindsay Lohan is in fact a crypto fascist? It's true. You know, I, um, Lohan is an Irish name, and as you know, Irish, the Irish are known for being national socialists. Of course. So, and so my, my guess is that uh, we're going to read, an, it was from Vulture, right? And where this yes. woman, so it's, what's the name of the new movie? It's called Irish Wish. Okay, so the and name, it was a St. Patty's Day weekend Netflix movie. So I'm going to, we're going we're gonna to yeah. be up front. We did not watch the movie. This isn't about us watching the movie. This is about another uh, person's interpretation of that movie. And when I say interpretation, I mean, this is like a long, long article. But all it was the a novella in which that Lindsay Lohan's new Netflix romantic comedy is, in fact, alt-right propaganda. And it's it's as nutty as it sounds. It really is. Maybe it's satire. I hope it's satire. If it is, I it's good. Know. I like it. Yeah. I, like, I mean, it, 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 the, the, the writing and the article has some bite to it, which good satire does. Yeah. So we'll, uh, we'll have to wait and see. So guys, go ahead and subscribe if you have not done so already. Please and thank you. If you are ready, Mary, we can just get right into it. You Let's ready? Let's go. Let's go. Let's go ahead and get started then.
then, shall we? First things first. The Pooniverse! The, oh, I, I, did, I just did, frick, I just did a uh, chair, like within 10 seconds of starting the show. Chair. Yes, Pooniverse! If you, it's, and that's with an H. The Pooniverse Poon. is here. The Twisted Childhood Cinematic Universe has been announced. So we're going to get <laughs> a team-up film with all of your childhood heroes. Wait, so Releasing in 2025, it's called Pooniverse Monsters Assemble, starring Winnie the Pooh, Bambi, Peter Pan, Tinkerbell, Pinocchio, Sleeping Beauty, and the Mad Hatter. Here's the problem, though. If they're all going to have their own individual films, how the hell do they win the movie? How the hell do they end up losing? You know, they, that means none of the bad guys die in their movies? I feel like I also see Headless Horseman here. Wait, no, I'm wrong. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't know. They're, they're doing the, the Winnie the Pooh sequel. They're doing the Bambi movie on its own. We already talked about the Pinocchio one as well. As well as Peter Pan and Tinkerbell. I have not, I, I yeah. knew nothing about Sleeping Beauty or the Mad Hatter. Never heard of, about those ones before. Nope. But what studio is this? Uh, it's called Jagged Edge Productions. So Wait, so Jagged Edge is the one that did the original Blood and Honey. So they're taking on all of these new... It's also the name of that hip-hop group that sang the song, Girl, Let's Just Get Married. So I guess they stole the name. They stole the name. <laughs> they stole the name, but <laughs> they're releasing the Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey sequel as well as this big, like, basically Avengers Endgame of all of your childhood stories. <laughs> first Monsters Assemble 2025. I love it. I love that for them. I so just, all of these are in public domain now. The, so it's, it's Bambi. I didn't know that about Sleeping Beauty. I thought Sleeping Beauty was still Disney's property, but apparently not. So Bambi the Reckoning... Yeah. Pinocchio unstrung. Okay, that's that's really <laughs> Peter dumb. Pan's Neverland Nightmare. That's my favorite. I like that. That has a ring to it for sure. <laughs> Pinocchio unstrung. Well, Pinocchio unstrung needs some work. The only thing he doesn't lie about is whether he's going to kill you or not. That's they were, they were clearly uh, you know, done, be not like, done work chopping be like that a, one. There'll be like a scene where he says you're going to die and the nose doesn't grow and then you get really scared cuz he didn't lie. Uh, it's definitely going to be like that, isn't it? It's going to be awful. <laughs> I can't wait. It's going to be a whole bunch of fun. Plus, the, the other good thing is, if I remember correctly, the first movie wasn't that long either. So my hope is that by the time all of these come out and they're all only like an hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes long, none of this two hour and 20 minute garbage for movies. So just a, a lot of attractive teenagers and, and young adults dying in short succession, all leading up to an Avengers style movie where... I don't know. They destroy a whole town. They destroy a whole country. They just take Britain by storm. It becomes some weird. I love how it's all in the UK. Yeah, for, it's like it's all. No it reason. becomes some weird allegory for immigration or something. Who knows? It's gonna be. It's gonna be weird. Uh, but yeah, it'll be funny. Come on, it'll be lots funny. of death, lots of destruction, lots of terrible dialogue. And the horror movies in between. always make their money back because they don't cost a lot to make. So mm -hmm. who can who can go wrong with something like that? I imagine that Winnie the Pooh will be the leader of the entire group, right? He's uh, out front as they all assemble around him. Yeah, they had to lead with him. Yeah. Well, who is their villain then? I uh, guess. Peter. Is Peter Pan going to be... I mean, who is their... Um... Christopher Robin. Christopher, Christopher Robin Chris died though, right? No, he didn't. No, he didn't. He comes back to the second one and he's a, he's a new actor because oh, the actor oh. didn't come back. Okay, so Christopher so Robin. So basically, Christopher Robin is the Iron Man of this world. Mm -hmm. I can't wait. And then the ghost of Bambi's mother. There you go. Um, it'll, be, it'll be fantastic. <laughs> Maybe one of them turns good. Like, okay. If, of, and Gaston. Of all of these Gaston characters. Gaston is going to be in it. Of all of these characters, which one is the most likely to, have, to repent and turn back to the good side? Or turn to the good side? Mm. Bambi. Bambi, he's going to become vegan. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> okay. We'll see. We'll have to wait and see, guys. It's gonna be uh, it's gonna be interesting to see how that works. All right, guys. So we went and saw a movie over the weekend. That movie was racist, Mary. <laughs> This is the title. It was just called Racist. It was just called This Movie is Racist. Yeah. Okay, so I saw in the comments when we were talking about this film uh, in which they were saying that, you know, you guys were triggered. I didn't really think of it as triggered. I thought it was healthy debate. 
Honestly, uh, <coughs> we were more triggered by Indiana Jones' Dial of Destiny than we were triggered by this movie. By the way, it's called The American Society of Magical Negroes, in case you missed that on Friday. Only made $1.25 million at the box office. Yeah, but it seems like such a low-budget film. So what did they spend on it? Do you know? Does, uh, there was no budget listed for this. That's weird. That's kind of sus. Yeah. Kind of sketchy that they won't tell us. I can I can double check. But, but it's like even the critics were hating on this movie because it wasn't fully committing to the wokeness. 30, 30% from the critics, 65% from the audience. 65 from audience is crazy though, but I guess you're already an ideologue if you're going to see it in theaters. Yeah, it's, it's not like there's a lot of people like us who are going for like the cringe factor. Right. Right. Also, like when we went to see the movie, we were like laughing at certain parts where I wasn't sure if we were supposed to laugh or not. Because nobody else in the theater We definitely was laughing. were laughing yeah. at the most inappropriate moments. Or I guess the other people in the theater didn't have as good of a sense of humor as us. But um, yeah, even the woke critics who you would assume would be heaping praise on this movie and on Justice Smith, they are giving it a low score. So um, I guess it missed the mark with just about everyone. Yes, so here, here's what it, the IMDb ratings. There's a 4.9% gave it a 10. Only 1% gave, gave it a 9. The reason for that is the ones who gave it a 10 are likely ideologues who don't even know whether they <laughs> like it or not. They're just giving it a 10 cause, yeah. right? But the ones, you could make the argument that, the, that that many ones is probably a little bit of that as well, right? People who didn't even see the movie just gave it a 1 because the movie concept is awful. You know... I don't honestly blame anyone who is review bombing this because I am just as tired and, uh, you know, pissed off that mm -hmm. they're continuing to make all of these white people bad movies. It's like this one is in the fictional universe. Killers of the Flower Moon, that was based on a true story. But ultimately, it doesn't really matter what the story is as long as white people are the villain. And Correct. people are sick of it. And I understand why they would be review bombing this, but I'm sure that plenty of those people leaving one out of 10 reviews actually did see the movie and gave it a chance and hated it justifiably okay, let me, so. Let me rephrase that. I believe that more people that gave it a one out of 10 actually watched it than those yeah. who gave it a 10 out of 10. Yeah. I would say you're if you want to look for the most accurate representation of the numbers, look towards the middle. So mm -hmm. I do believe that like the two out of tens are probably pretty accurate. Your seven out of tens are probably like I would actually like to believe that the people who went and saw the movie and really wanted to like it and are ideologically inclined, but not totally morally bankrupt, gave it a seven. Uh, the right? film's director, Kobe Libby, made it abundantly clear that the goal of this film was to lecture people and use it as a bludgeon to achieve political power. He told NBC News this conversation around the expectation that black people are prioritizing white comfort over our own history and our own sense of self is an incredibly contemporary problem. That's happening politically in America right now. You see these laws being passed in places like Florida around what black history is taught that are literally saying that elements of black history, things that really happened in America, cannot be said out loud in the classroom if it makes white kids uncomfortable. I have no idea what laws he's referring to here. He reiterated in a more recent interview about the magical Negro trope. It's a stock character, a recurring character that typically white writers have employed across movies and history, a black character who only exists to support the white lead. They don't really have their own internal life. They're not really a three-dimensional person. Okay, so if you're trying to make a movie that combats this racist trope of the magical Negro character because you think that it doesn't have enough depth and isn't written as a complete person, your idea of combating that racist trope is to just flip it around on white people and write all of your white characters to be magical crackers. That was his idea. Let's just write this dumb white coworker, Jason, as, uh, as you said, Brett, a characteristic buffoon who is entirely selfish, narcissistic. He has no interior life. He has no thoughts of his own. He has no independent thought. He's not good at his job. He has no redeeming qualities whatsoever. So 
how about you wrote a movie where everyone, every character gets to be a full person with a backstory and a personality? That would actually remedy this problem. Yep, but but the, you are incapable of doing that. Because the 2000s already did it and they don't know how to do it themselves. Also, it's... it's I, I believe that when people were writing these tropes before, they were not written from a place of malice where everything being written today is absolutely done from a place of malice because they've reached a point of racial consciousness, meaning that it's employed in their thoughts while they're, while they're writing it, right? So they're not able to write these characters with good intentions. Whereas mm -hmm. in the past, I don't think it was done with ill intent. I love how their claim is that all white people in society in this critical race theory mm. worldview have an unconscious bias toward mm. black people or just non-white people in general. Mm. I think what's way worse is that now ideologues like Kobe Libby or like Justice Smith, who are black, have a conscious bias against mm. white people. I think that's far more insidious than white people having unconscious bias, which they have theoretically zero control over because it's conditioned into them from birth. The movie was predicted to have made three million over the opening weekend, and it came up two million shy of that goal. So it just shows you that the general public of all races, creeds and colors have no desire to go see this film. I just want to double check if they actually didn't Release report them. their budget. Um, because that seems really fishy, why they wouldn't do that. I mean, it may come out later. I'm not seeing any numbers here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is from, um, what studio was this? Focus Features? It was Focus, yep. Okay. I don't, I don't know any of, uh, no other projects from them come to mind right now. Are they known for this? Focus is a is an offshoot of one of the bigger studios, though I can't remember which one off the top of my head. But the okay. the point is is that it was never going to make a ton of money, and under three million makes about perfect sense. <laughs> and it just shows you that the public has no interest to watch stuff like this. The funny thing is, you don't even need to boycott these people anymore. You don't even need to boycott these companies because they're essentially boycotting themselves. They're doing all the work for us. Yep. So. All right. That's good news. It is, it is good news. It is absolutely good news. Here's some really just... sad news <clears throat> next. So it looks like the architect of the notorious Willy Wonka chocolate experience AI scam just did an interview where he has said this scandal ruined his life. He said, my life has been turned around. My life is ruined. I was hoping for an event that would be joyful and happy. I wanted people to experience happiness. Also, he could fund his wedding. Well, that, that burst <clears throat> your bubble. So he was trying to use an AI scam to raise money to throw his wedding. Wouldn't basically. it have been better for him to just be honest about it and, and raise the money off real <laughs> photos from your event rather than... No, this. this is funny. He's he's also I'm sorry, but he's he's leaving himself in the lurch here because all he has to do now is actually sell tickets to this event that he threw, and the yeah. cultural significance of it now will mean that he will make quadruple the yeah. money back. This is what we've been saying this yeah. whole time: like lean into the memes and make it you yep. know your own brand but instead this guy unfortunately is trying to play the victim he said he's received hundreds of messages encouraging him to himself and accusing him of being the devil a villain and a terrible father after footage that? aired some people i guess he is some people took to social media to express sympathy for him so i guess he was just reveling in that feeling like he's the victim even though you were the one that put on the awful event, bro. He, he needs to leave. You know what it is? He should, he, the, <laughs> the event shouldn't be for kids. It should be for childless millennials who will lean into the kind of LOL so random nature of it. And he'll sell yeah. endless tickets to dinks. Yeah, the, the irony poisoning is now his brand. Can you play the video? Is, is that him um, speaking out there? I'm, I'm interested to hear his voice. was created and written by myself. However, let me be very, very clear on, on this matter. I suffer with dyslexia. I've had to run it through AI to be able to check spelling, grammar, and continuity. What? Awful names. You look like a villain or a devil <laughs> or... Saint. I can't understand a word he's saying. 
His accent is absolutely crazy, but I could make out some of it. Um, but yeah, it just seems like he's not taking the best advantage it was of actually Mary going who, viral. It was actually Mary who accused him of being the devil. She's like, you're, it hurting, was me, you're hurting the children. How dare you? Think of the children. But yeah, I think that these days, uh, with the likelihood that anyone could go viral on social media for any reason, you've got to have a contingency plan what you're going to do if it goes wrong. You've got to take advantage of the moment. What he needs to do is just get a good photographer to take pictures of the actual event. And then at least you're not marketing something fake. Well, I mean, the event was a one of its kind experience. Was, There's yeah, no way a, for him like to do up. that. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. There's no way. But, um, you know, there yeah. was a sincere effort, and uh, Billy Cool will remember you fondly forever. <laughs> well, okay? and, and the sad thing is now, like, the unknown is probably raking in the dough on Cameo. Oh, for uh, sure. The, the Oompa Loompa lady is probably raking they in the dough. They were all on such Cam charmers. I also saw a video the other day about um, this is such an aside because, you know, we saw the picture of the, the Oompa Loompa and she's actually quite nice looking. Yeah. Apparently, Chick Fil A girl had a glow up because there was pictures going around the the, the Chick Fil A the the clip of the girl at Chick Fil A the, the video of the girl at Chick wait where she was like you should get the frosted yeah. lemonade so apparently she had like a glow up and like <laughs> okay. her pictures were going around online okay so I I assumed that those that video came from like her high school like after school job must have yeah <laughs> so got, good for her yeah for for the glow well, up. we could just like look up chick-fil-a girl has a glow up but uh all right like alex from Tar i remember that was crazy which one's that i remember the one who got yelled at for not selling somebody the toothbrush no the, that was the chick i forget that was her target name. target uh what was tori that? target tori. tori yeah but before target tori there was alex from target Who's and that? He, I can't believe you don't remember this. I guess this was just for like teenage girls at the time. But there's this picture of this Target employee who must have been like 17 that went totally viral while he's just like bagging someone's items. And I guess that it, it just went viral because he's like vaguely handsome in the picture. And Alex from Target started trending and all of these girls were fawning over him. And then he got invited on Ellen and all of these different talk shows just for being like vaguely attractive. Okay. It was kind of crazy. And I don't think that something like this would have happened today. But show the audience, uh, show the audience his picture. Oh, no, I was looking up Chick-fil-A girl has a... I was, Does Chick-fil-A girl I, have any pictures? I was, I was looking, yeah, there's uh, her on the... They're in the fast food extended universe. They are. Well, along with uh, um, Waffle House Wendy. Waffle House Wendy. Yeah, that needs to turn into a franchise. Yeah. Jagged Edge, if you're listening, yep. take advantage of this opportunity, please. All right, guys. Let's uh, let's move on then, shall we? we got some more stuff to discuss. First of all, I don't know how many of you here watching are looking forward to X-Men 97, which is, of course, a continuation of the 1992 X-Men cartoon. Well, there's been a whole lot going on about the, the showrunner who got fired a week before it came out, which is a really big deal. Not, you know, not sidelined, not quietly fired, like canned the week before it was released. And people were asking... Why? Why would <laughs> Disney? Why would Disney fire the guy who put your whole show together a week before it came out? Well, let's he had a this. gay only fans. Well, apparently they knew about that beforehand because it's not pornographic content. I think it's feet I content. Just, I want to live in the reality yeah. where he gets canned because of his only gay only so fans. Says I just want to live in that world. Uh, this is from Fandom Pulse. Uh, it says, in a shocking move, Disney and Marvel Studios recently fired Bo DeMaio, this, uh, the creator of the highly anticipated animated series X-Men 97. DeMaio's company email has been deactivated without prior notice, and the studio has remained tight-lipped about the reasons behind the decision. Despite DeMaio's silence, he deleted all of his social media platforms as well which doesn't bode well that screams that that speaks to something worse than just being fired from your job like you were caught doing yeah. something seriously messed up yeah so it says DeMaio had already received approval for a second season and was making plans for a third with the studio having high hopes for the project and DeMaio's involvement in other upcoming uh, Marvel ventures wasn't he was apparently, there a lot of bad blood around this series in development because though? of the because of uh, yeah, like because there were concerns designs. about character designs 
yes. getting changed severely and, and of course this title of this article in a character being non-binary they highlight stuff, yeah. here in the title that the showrunner is gay and black yes. and we're wondering okay was he hired for certain diversity well, he was, reasons one of his other credits was like one of the unwritten or one of the unpublished uh, Blade reboot scripts was one of his projects. So here we go. That's so not says, something you want on your resume. According to his uh, to his report on the In Snyder, uh, an inside source describes DeMaio as nice but difficult to work with. Uh, Roca added that the fact that DeMaio maintained an OnlyFans account, albeit non-sexual in nature, unless you're into hold gay on. feet. <laughs> hold uh, on, hold on. So he's posting foot fetish content on his OnlyFans for what? other men. And... They're disturb. They're describing that as non-sexual in nature. Apparently, that's a little bit of a stretch. There was no penetration, he says. Like the <laughs> exasperate uh, that likely exacerbated the situation. Combine these strange kinks with a volatile self-celebrity, and it's no secret why X Men '97 seems to play out Demio's power fantasies. Uh, this is the quote: "It says Demio is a nice guy, but super, imp uh, but impossible to deal with. Likely true, an absolute nightmare to deal with on a daily basis. He's been really annoying them. Uh, he's been really annoying them." He's saying Marvel leadership for a while now, and he has nothing to do with the fact that there's a lot of diversity in LGBTQ stuff in X-Men. It's just that he's really prickly and difficult to work with. So he's a, a nightmare to work with, and some directors get away with that. Some do not. Uh, as for the OnlyFans reveal, the insider also suggests that DeMaio's activity on the OnlyFans did not go over well with his Disney bosses, who found some of his behavior <laughs> Creepy. You know what this is? This is foot fetish discrimination. It is? And I'm here for it. I support it. But I'm just what saying. What kind of free country are we living in when the guy can't even post his foot fetish content without getting fired? I'm just saying that if he had a gay OnlyFans that didn't involve foot fetish content, they might not feel this way. They might have been totally okay with it. Yeah. So also, especially if this were a female showrunner who had an OnlyFans, there's no way they would have voiced any concerns. But that's another story. It says, um, if allegations of abusive behavior on DeMaio's part proved to be true, it would highlight a concerning pattern within Disney and Marvel Studios regarding their ability to properly vet the characters and conduct their, uh, and conduct, and conduct, I'm sorry, of their creators and talent. The entertainment industry has been rocked by numerous scandals involving alleged abusers, and Disney and Marvel Studios have not been immune to these controversies. I guess uh, Jonathan Majors is worth pointing out here. Yeah. Um... But, yeah, but that's not the same thing as being difficult to work with or having no. a toxic personality. It's not I nearly the same thing. I think it has to be worse than that because there's plenty of directors who are just assholes who get away with being assholes. Yeah, but he doesn't have the track record of those directors. That is true. He doesn't but, I mean, have that doesn't, the that respect doesn't mean in the industry that those directors it's have. It's still an acute problem. Firing him a week before has can't have anything to do with him being difficult to work with. It has to be more than that. Maybe he was like in a meeting with the boardroom or something and he put punched someone in the face. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> like like the way I see it is like, look, if he's if it really is that he's just a dick and he's just really difficult to work with, it's got to be his way or the highway. They let season air and then they quietly let him go and replace him as showrunner in season two. You don't risk the bad press of having this guy fired a week before his creation comes out if it's not something more substantial. Yeah. I don't know. Him deleting his social media, that's also a red flag. Yep. We'll have to Not wait and Not even see. making a statement about the situation. We'll have to wait and see what happens. It makes you look happens. worse than, than just explaining yourselves. I agree 110%. All right, uh, uh, Miriam Margulies is becoming one of my favorite people in all of Hollywood. If you guys remember last week, she basically told Harry Potter fans to grow up and, and stop being babies. She said it's been 25 years, grow up. This is becoming my favorite, <laughs> is these celebrities who are, like aloof is my new favorite characteristic of any and all celebrities. I just want them to look disinterested or just unabashedly like, I'm just not putting up with anyone's shit. So this is what she says. Uh, Miriam Margulies was offered a role in, in the upcoming Marvel Studios series Agatha which of course is two years too late and the Agatha Harkness story is uh, long since dead it was a it was a meme it was a song that people liked from like Loki season one right so it's over uh, but she declined after being offered half of what she asked for I don't like America and I don't want to be in Georgia for four months so, so I just said well I want a million pounds and they said you can have half that she's like nope well, a million pounds, that's actually less than... Um, it's 1.2 million. Yeah, that's 1.2 million in USD. Well, uh, so they just 
They just didn't reply. But I was thinking this lady is either loaded or just has the most indestructible ego of all time. No. And then someone replied, the craziest part of the story isn't about her. It's about Marvel actually agreeing to pay her 600K for a Disney Plus show. That's more than Robert Downey Jr., Chris Evans, Chris Hemsworth, or ScarJo were paid for any of their respective first MCU films, even as a lead actor. And we wonder why Disney has budgeting issues. This is why I <laughs> this is why I was so happy for Nev Campbell walking away from Scream 6. Don't talk about the wage gap. Tell me what you're worth, and if they don't want to pay it, then move on to the next mm -hmm. project. This is, I think, what Miriam Margolis did, what Neve Campbell did. This is what most women in general, but actresses in Hollywood, are not capable of doing, which is advocating for themselves, negotiating for their own favor, and uh, actually fall, fall, like following through on the promise of walking away from a contract if you don't get what you deserve. Yep. A lot of people aren't willing to do that. No, they're not. And uh, like uh, the comments seem to be split between people saying like, this is her fault and she's stupid or good for her for knowing her worth. Okay, this was a total girl boss moment. I won't have it framed any other way. I agree. <laughs> uh, the, the craziest part of the story isn't about her. It's about Marvel actually agreeing to pay her 600K for a Disney Plus show. Yeah, like, uh, look, Robert Downey Jr. was an unknown entity at the time. He was still a recovering drug addict. He had no proof that he was going to be reliable in any way, shape, or form. Okay. And he built on that from then on out. But what about the other examples of Chris Evans, Chris Hemsworth, ScarJo? Box office returns on the back end would equal out to more money. Mm. Okay, plus ScarJo wasn't in her own Fair movie. Point. She was in Iron Man 2. But, I mean, it is crazy a lot of these people in the replies are saying that you know a, a, an ask for a million dollars isn't too much for a disney plus show where you're working for four months mm -hmm. that is absolutely insane that is a huge ask mm -hmm. especially because this show going to streaming doesn't have any direct revenue mm -hmm. on the other end and then someone says Disney makes two trillion a year, but still wants to nickel and dime everyone. She's a great lady and a great actress. Would have done wonders on the show and doing publicity for the show. You're lost, Disney. I'm picturing her giving the same Harry Potter speech while on the press tour for this. She's like, these Marvel fans are just kind of immature. It was 10 years ago. Grow up. <laughs> that that would be crazy. I wish she took it now, now that I think about it. But I mean, I, okay, I think okay. in the, the chat, I was not saying Robert Downey Jr. was unknown. I'm saying he was an unknown quantity, meaning that recovering from drugs, he did not. They did not know whether he was going to be somebody they could rely on in the future. I apologize if there was a, a misconstruction in my words. Yes, um, but I mean, with the state of things yeah. right now, where they're spending literally hundreds of millions of dollars on streaming shows for Disney Plus mm. in the MCU. Um, they cannot afford to be paying a single actor over a million dollars for four months of work. I think that is crazy. Yeah. That is a crazy ask. I'm happy for her for having the balls, but that is out of the, any realm of possibility yep. for, for the fact that they're losing so much money right now. Yep. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and look at this then. Yeah, this is a, a bit of an update, is it not? Yeah. Olivia Rodrigo, after round and found out, she was served some humble pie because now she is no longer allowed to distribute free Plan B pills to her fans at her concerts on the Guts Tour. And this was great news. It's just total merry victory from here on out. It looks like uh, abortion organizations from the National Abortion Fund at the Guts Tour are no longer allowed to distribute emergency contraceptives at Olivia's concerts. The organizers tell Variety that after a widespread media attention, local abortion funds were told on Thursday afternoon they're no longer allowed to hand out free emergency birth control pills and other reproductive health resources at the concerts. What's most insane here, and I didn't know this when we initially covered it, not only were they handing out Plan B pills and condoms at these concerts, they were also handing out lube to children. 
they were handing out i mean that is the least justifiable one on the list because it has nothing to do with unplanned pregnancy it has nothing to do with roe v wade or, or any of the sexual health. politics or anything like that sexual health reproductive rights it has well, nothing okay, yes. to do with any sexual of that sexual health but not reproductive it's, health it's yeah. all very predatory and it's about making promiscuity more suggestible and favorable to literal children and it's well known that children are the ones attending olivia rodrigo's tour because i've even seen memes and tiktoks that are like it's so uncomfortable to attend the guts tour as someone who's over 18. you feel like you stick out like a sore thumb if you're an adult at one of these concerts it's the kids and it's their parents and otherwise those are all the people there and shame on the parents who, after realizing this is happening, are still taking them to this tour. It's an incredibly dark side. Imagine like you're at the tour, like you're you're like you go to the tour, your daughter's like over at a merch table, and like somebody <laughs> just walks up to you, the mom, and just hands you a bunch of Plan B and lube, and you're just like, what the fuck? Yeah, and you're like, <laughs> okay, I'm gonna put this in my plastic clear bag that I had to bring here because of the rules at these arenas show everyone walking past me that I have plan B and condoms in my bag. Okay, it says this decision came from Olivia Rodrigo's team. That's the interesting part. It wasn't the abortion funds that backed down. It was Olivia Rodrigo's team that saw all of the negative press and they Shouldn't backed they off. Love it? Shouldn't they love it? Doesn't this lean into her reputation? I mean, I think that she was trying to be edgy and make abortion part or of like her some, brand. Or some but parents who were taking their kids to see these shows the saying, we're not going to come and watch you if you're panning this stuff out. That's the truth. Olivia Rodrigo knows and Olivia Rodrigo's team knows that her fans are kids. Mm -hmm. They know that parents are the ones spending money on tickets and on merch and all the rest of it. So who they have to please is the parents not the kids, not social kids media stands. The kids aren't the ones spending money. So you need to appeal to the actual consumer base. And if they have a problem with the fact that you're distributing lube to their little children at the concert, you're gonna have to back down imagine and being, stop. Imagine, so this is what I'm imagining. Like you're like, oh, it's my dream job. I got hired to work for Olivia Rodrigo and everybody gets hazed. Sorry, you're on lube duty. It's your job to <laughs> hand out lube to all the kids. Okay, I, well, I want to be clear, though. The, the Plan B and the condoms and the loop, they were getting distributed by the booths that are run by the National Network of Abortion Funds. It was not affiliated with Olivia Rodrigo directly, but they were allowed to operate inside the arenas, and now they're not allowed to do that. But what they're threatening to do now is stand outside the arenas on the sidewalk and put out booths on the sidewalk giving plan B lube and condoms to children. So that's their plan C, I guess, is to just go on public streets and do this, which is even more insane that they're doubling down when the parents have voiced their concerns. Is she the first artist to do something like this? Somehow I don't imagine that this is a first. No, she's probably not the first artist to do this. However, um, she would be the first artist that has a predominantly child fan base to do it yeah and that's the part that i think most people are mad at um but their stated reason here is because there are children present at the concerts and all of these people on stan twitter are so mad at the fact that they phrased it this way they said just because children are present at the tour doesn't mean she shouldn't promote abortion and contraceptives it's not like she's giving them to kids she literally was giving them to kids though. Like, What are they saying? What are they saying then? They're saying it's not like she's giving them to kids. Who is she giving them to? The magical non-kid kid that is there? The, the, the parents? <laughs> the parents? I, I don't know. But she definitely 100% was distributing Plan B pills, condoms, and lubricant to teenagers and possibly kids younger than that. Okay. So that is just 100% false. Like you're literally denying reality. Um, another one said, Olivia was doing a great thing. Let's Even stop pretending that teenagers don't have sex. Between all the anti-abortion legislation and conservatives attacking sex ed, they're setting young girls up to be 15-year-old mothers. Despicable. And there they are, just blatantly falling for Planned Parenthood propaganda because Planned Parenthood also distributes contraceptives. But... I'm I'm just so confused because if contraceptives actually worked and were reliably preventing pregnancies, 
um, for those who are not ready to be mothers, then how exactly would Planned Parenthood still make a profit off of all of the abortion procedures that they offer? Just think. Hmm. Doesn't quite make sense to me. Just think someday some mother is going to be telling her daughter, uh, you were conceived at an Olivia Rodrigo concert. And it could have been stopped, too, but they stopped <laughs> giving out the abortion pills. <laughs> I always hated you. <laughs> I didn't really want you, but they ran out of the pills that night. They said I couldn't, they, they wouldn't, they wouldn't hand me any in your, in your father. He just, he wouldn't take no for an answer. Ugh, this is just such deceptive and predatory language. And they're interviewing people who work for these networks of abortion funds. One said, the reality is that youth have sex and youth need access to birth control and emergency contraception. What we're doing is completely legal in all 50 states. Not under Mary's dictatorship, it won't be. And then another one said, <laughs> there is something really positive about a 16 or 15 year old having a plan B and a few condoms in her dresser to use as she needs it. Sex and sexual health tools, whether that be abortion, plan B, condoms, they're villainized because you're seen as being promiscuous. We don't like it, at, or we don't look at it as a sign of responsibility. If the kids aren't getting education that they need in school, at least they can rely on reproductive health organizations in their communities to get that information and resources to them. So we're just going to take the place of the parents in the household, and we're going to educate your children about sex and try our darndest to make sure they are sexually active before you have told them that is permissible in your household. Well, it's so mm. predatory. It is, a, it is a pretty well-known fact now that especially leftists, they really do believe that whether it's at the schools, things like this, that you don't have a right to your own children mm -hmm. and that they, the state, and those who are statists are the ones who know what's best for you and your kids, right? Yeah. And uh, this is just a, a really, really disturbing. I, I don't know how else to say it. As somebody who just w would never listen to her music and has no interest in the in the music, seeing stuff like this, I wonder what it would have looked like in the '80s. I guess these uh, these things probably existed in some fashion, but it just somehow feels even more insidious now, given that they really do want to raise your kids. I mean, it just it adds insult to injury that Olivia Rodrigo's music isn't even good. That's so, the real part. Uh, you're going to be a propagandist Disney industry plant mm -hmm. and your music isn't even going to be good. Mm -hmm. I guess she's just like making it easier for people to boycott her because I didn't even need to stop streaming her music. I just need to continue living my life as usual where I don't listen to her at all. There you go. <laughs> all right. Uh, what should we do then? Cringe or cute of the day? How about you decide, Brad? Okay, well, we'll start with cringe of the day first then. Actually, this isn't even cringe. This is just an anniversary of Vanessa Hudgens talking about COVID four years ago today, ladies and gentlemen. This is my gentlemen. favorite moment of all time. It, it really is one of the better ones. Here we go. Um, yeah, till July sounds like a bunch of bullshit. I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> it's a virus. I get it. Like, I respect it. But at the same time, like, even if everybody gets it, like... Yeah, people are gonna die. It's just terrible, but like, inevitable? Based. Preach! I don't know, maybe I shouldn't be doing this right now. Uh, I love how she just immediately knew that they were gonna come after her for you saying know, that. And, and you know, some people are gonna die. And she's saying this like in the middle of lockdown period in 2020, before July, and this is after they keep moving the goalpost. And she knows that she's the Coachella queen. And she needs to make it to Coachella in 2020. She's got she's got money to make, guys. Yeah, she's, she's got, got Instagram and if that means, posts. And if that means a couple post. of thousand old and immunocompromised people have to die, then that's a, a price she's willing to pay. <laughs> Look, I'm just saying the old people and the immunocompromised people just don't go to Coachella. Let everyone enjoy Coachella that's in 2020. Uh, over the weekend, where was that? There was a lot. Of, I saw multiple masks over the weekend. Like, Me too. And, and it was weird because like, okay, no, it's not weird. It's it's more, it's just sad. So yeah. most of them that I saw were people that were quite large and, and didn't look healthy to begin with, which falls back to my point where if this person wants to wear a mask, that's fine, right? They look 
unhealthy to me. And as long as that person isn't telling me that I'm hurting them by not wearing one, then as long as we're not supposed to be living under this shared delusion anymore, then I have no problem with that. But the last time I was at the airport, there was definitely some more masks than I had seen recently, but it was DC. So maybe they're just dumb. I mean, at the airport, it's definitely going to be more than usual, but I'm just going into Target and I see someone with uh, who is young, looks young, isn't overweight, okay, yeah. and has the mask on that's made of cloth, so it doesn't even work. And I just think, like, they really did a number on you. Yeah. And I feel bad. I see I a feel lot bad the, for there's, them. There's several employees at the Target around here. They got, like, wild. purple or colored hair. They're really thin. They look unwell. We're going to talk about an article later in the week that says a new study out of Finland that says people that... Uh, that follow the woke ideology are just unhappier than everybody else. Imagine my shock. Duh. But there's uh, a we got one already. from Shashmil. Sex ed in the 90s was the consequences of sex and how bad it is to have it early. Sex ed now is how to have sex with adults and not get caught. Literally, that's that's what they're doing and they may not realize it. They may not admit it. But let's be honest. Who are the 16-year-old girls that are getting all of this free plan B condoms and sexual health tools, who are they hooking up with? Because I'm guessing it's not other boys their age. Not like that would be an ideal circumstance either, but ask the common sense questions and you will find out that this is entirely inappropriate. Yeah, and uh, I mean, I still wonder about that, right? There's still jocks and cheerleaders that still exist. It's not like you were saying earlier that you were reading that it says Gen Z is having less sex than previous generations. They're also more unhappy and tend to be more um, depressed than previous generations. I think that has a lot to do with phones, but jocks are still a thing. Cheerleaders are still a thing. Cool kids are still a thing, right? I'm not saying there aren't cool kids in Gen Z. Yeah. I think that overall... They are socially stunted, some of them less so than others. Okay. All right. Well, let's look at some cue to the day then. Palette cleanser. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That wasn't even cringe. I love that. I love this. This is from Charlie. It says, in honor of Mr. Bocus, my Charlie sends his regards and a heartfelt RIP. Cute, Charlie. Thank you. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you for that. And one more here. Looks like he needs a nap or like he just ate a bunch. Uh, <laughs> pork chop getting ready for his play cat centerfold shoot. This is me after Taco Bell. There you go. Okay. They're releasing so many new menu items right now. Are you excited? Honestly, no. They keep disappointing me. Um, the crispinata, lame. Not not what it promised. It's just, I don't know. They're losing my trust. They really are. Well, I mean, you can always go back to the things that work. It's, that's fine. Yeah. 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 It's all just the same stuff in different shapes. Well, then perhaps Mary then talking about <laughs> Gina Carano will raise her spirits. Gina Carano is finally speaking out against Disney and she's talking about her lawsuit against Disney. And it seems like the mainstream media, which so readily threw her under the bus years back, is now finally giving her a platform to speak about these issues. It's honestly kind of suspicious. So she just was featured in this long form interview with The Hollywood Reporter, and it's titled Gina Carano on getting sacked from Star Wars and her grudge match with Disney. The ex MMA sensation finally opens up about her Mandalorian firing, the to toxic tweets that led to it, and why she's tag teaming with Elon Musk to take the entertainment giant to the mat. They say so, finally, like she wouldn't have done this before. I'm guessing she would have been happy to do this right after it happened, but none of these outlets, yeah. whether it's the Hollywood Reporter, Variety, IndieWire, Deadline, the 10,000 yeah. other trades that exist, they wouldn't have touched this article with a 10 foot pole, and they exactly, definitely yeah. would have, wouldn't have done it in the way that The Hollywood Reporter did it now, which is pretty fair and, down the, and mi down the middle of the line. Yeah, the way that they wrote this was actually quite fair, quite balanced. They didn't mislabel her with any, you know, far-right conspiracy no, theorist, right QAnon type of things. Yeah, they said she's a right-leaning libertarian, but she avoids labels. And they didn't try to tack on the Nazi label. They didn't try to call her a crypto fascist. Yes, they don't want to get sued. <laughs> exactly. And I honestly was thinking, you know, this. I don't think that this would be sinister at all of Gina Carano to do if she's trying to take her career in a different direction. I thought that this article, this interview, might have been commissioned by her and her new talent agency. I mean, that's how I feel. Okay, so every time Mel, Mel Gibson has a new movie come out, 
there's articles that are written that are pretty favorable yeah. and I always assume that they're paid for because they mm -hmm. hate Mel Gibson. It's pay to play. If yeah. they already have you on their shit list, you're going to have to pay to get any fair coverage whatsoever. So it would be nothing against Gina Carano if that is what happened behind the scenes. I am suspecting that because we actually skipped covering this uh, a week ago, but she did just join a new... Um, a new production company. Mm -hmm. um, it was called Straight Wire, right? Yes. Is that what it was called? Yes. I was like, okay, so it's the Daily Wire, except they're all heterosexual. Just, just they're not over the Daily Wire. Who's gay over the Daily Wire? Whoa, uh, bombshell. So I just want to read some of the quotes from this interview. She said that her initial reaction to getting canceled was, I just laid down and cried and cried. I curled into a fetal position. It's not that I didn't think that something like that could happen. It was that I couldn't imagine they would put out this horrendous statement about me after working with me, the most powerful entertainment company in the world, saying that about me. Um, and they're talking about her quote unquote abhorrent views about people of different gender orientations and stuff. Um, and it says, this is interesting, Gina Carano says she's never directly communicated with Elon Musk, even though he's funding her lawsuit against Disney, but she called him her guardian angel. I think it's pretty incredible what he's doing. A lot of billionaires put their money into buying islands and building bunkers. Elon Musk is using his money to fight massive injustice battles. But who's to say if he's also in simultaneously I mean, buying bunkers he's and islands. probably a very hard person to get a hold of, right? Like, <laughs> I, I don't think that just... But he has enough time to tweet throughout the day. Again. Can't take a phone call from Gina? Can't take a phone call from Gina. He's got stuff Too to do. Too busy tweeting? He's got stuff to do. All right, fine. He's got to tweet looking into it to anybody who says anything that's going exactly. wrong on Twitter. Yeah. Um, she said that of her of her Hollywood banishment, she said, you become unhirable. And then it becomes okay for other people to disrespect you. And you're just carrying around this disrespect, shouldering all of this shame, and it affects your physical physicality, your mentality. You're just kind of hopeless. So to be able to fight back, that feels good. Um, and then they kind of went through her trajectory of her career. And once they got to Star Wars, Casting her as Cara Dune, it got interesting. There's a $20 super chat here with no message from DJ Saint Walker. Thank you so much. Thank you. I think it's her, your first uh, super it's, chat. It's first, thank, thank you. you. So this says of uh, her faded meeting with Kathleen Kennedy. This is herself. This, okay. So this this was crazy. <laughs> it needs to be made into a short. It, into it a, needs into to a be movie. made into a movie. Yes, honestly, it does. Carano's story it needs to be made into a movie so this says all carano had to do to land the part of cara dune was sit with lucasfilm president kathleen kennedy the meeting was one was not one would categorize as relaxed she said she has a wall and has strength this woman has done a lot of incredible things in her life i remember she just had a facial and her face was really red and peeling but it didn't bother her one bit. She never took her eyes off me. I've been around enough alphas where I don't need to out alpha anybody. And from there, I believe she gave John Favreau the okay for me to join the family. That is just cartoonish villain behavior. I love she's it. She's just sitting there with scales falling off of her face and she's like, so are you ready to be a part of the Star Wars family? She turns and then and like John Favreau's just standing just <laughs> off camera. He's cowering, goes, he's quaking and, and crying. she just gives him the up nod. Yeah, exactly. Hire her, hire her. <laughs> and then they open the trap door and Gina Carano falls into a tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like as she has a big red as button. She's going by like uh, old versions of Mickey and the head of Walt <laughs> Disney is there cryogenically frozen as she goes down exactly. her to the bowels of Disney. She's just an Austin Powers villain. Yep. Okay. So this says Carano had followed some of the bullying that was faced by other castmates of the Star Wars family. She noticed that they seemed hurt by their experience, referring to actors like Daisy Ridley, John Boyega, and Kelly Marie Tran. It really hasn't helped any of their careers. <laughs> like, Z uh, John Boyega seems to be doing fine. Well, Daisy Ridley 
really is only known for this. Yeah. So yeah. it did help her career, and right? Kelly Marie, no, I mean, she, she, Daisy Ridley is, but she still had roles before that and she isn't really acting after that. It is kind of a cloud that hangs over you now. You kind of have to sell your soul to Disney and there's no coming back. Yeah. Um, yeah, all of whom were subjected to, subjected to racist and misogynist taunts online. <laughs> I saw a lot of pain and I didn't know what it was. In my naive perspective, I thought it was between the people who liked the old movies and the people who liked the new movies. Um, Carano is actually basically correct. It's the people who like the old movies versus the people who yeah. like the new movies. <laughs> but I understand it's a little bit more complicated than that for her. Um, but Gina Carano was not just accepted, but embraced by the Star Wars fandom at the time. Per Gina Carano's legal complaint against Disney, in season one of The Mandalorian, they employed a most favored nation clause for the actors, which meant that everyone except for Pedro Pascal had the same pay rate of 25K per episode. But Gina Carano, she was putting in a lot of work and she thought that her pay rate was going to go up in the second season. Well, yeah, because you, like, what's the point of actually trying if, you're, if there isn't the possibility for growth? Right. Where's the meritocracy? A, when you have a standout character that people want to see more of. But I guess you can make the argument that she was supposed to get her own show and that would have been the payday right but she didn't actually know that at the time yeah. the, the season two was starting yeah. and her pay rate was decided so she didn't know that they had this idea for a Cara Dune spinoff um, but she said for for the second season she only got offered a one-time bonus of five thousand dollars and she said it felt like a bit of a slap in the face her talent agency were telling her you, you can walk away and I'm like, obviously, I'm not. Um, she wasn't really in the position to twenty five thousand dollars. And then over here, Marianne Margulies is like six hundred thousand dollars, right? For my, for my bit role in Agatha. You Which learn is, that audacity after years on this planet, yep, decades, yep. teach you that kind of audacity and caucasity. So this is fast forwarding past the beep bop boop pronouns controversy and Gina Carano getting forced into a struggle session with trans activists. Um, so it looks like Disney, they wanted her to post an official apology for putting beep bop boop in her Twitter bio. Womp womp. So she said, you know, one of those statements that almost always makes you roll your eyes. HR wanted her publicist to craft it for her, but she offered to write her own. And after several days of back and forth edits, Lucasfilm ultimately felt the final statement wasn't contrite enough and abandoned the effort. Then they submitted Gina Carano to media training. So about the media trainer... Gina said she kept her sunglasses on and came into my house and sat all the way across the room. I'm getting like uh, <laughs> Anna Delvey. Literally, it's, it's giving Anna Delvey. It's giving Elizabeth Holmes. <laughs> it's giving George Santos. OK, and then we just started talking normally. And she said something I found very interesting. It's not what you say. It's how it's interpreted. You're giving very logical responses to an emotional reaction. Yeah. Unfortunately, that's not something that most... Okay, so your ability to respond to things is usually pretty ingrained in you, right? You're either an emotional respondent or you're uh, a logical mm -hmm. respondent, right? Uh, and even that depends greatly on gender a lot of the time, yeah. right? So the idea that you will be able to change that for the sake of your career isn't a recipe for sincerity in any fashion. No, I mean, I think they accidentally just said the quiet part out loud there. Yep. Who knows if this media trainer person even sincerely believes in any of the things that they would put in a Gina Carano apology letter. And this is true. They probably of, don't. Uh, in, 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 this is not necessarily true of Pedro Pascal, which is what we're going to get into. Yes. Which is, uh, which he basically says the same thing to her, but supposedly he has more stake in this because of his mm -hmm. family. Yeah. So basically Gina Carano without... And she, Gina Carano, like inadvertently called out Pedro Pascal for hypocritically virtue signaling and not actually believing in the woke ideology that he espouses. So prior to this incident, Pedro Pascal, who has a trans sister, this means he has a brother who thinks he's a chick. He laid out the basics of the trans movement for Gina Carano. He was telling me, just put hashtag trans rights in your feed. Do it and they'll leave you alone. 
Gina Carano didn't take this advice because, quote, that's not my style to put hashtag anything. I'm also not going to put hashtag Trump's rights. The two had a subsequent conversation amid the backlash against Gina Carano. Quote, me and Pedro were so close. He knows a thousand percent I'm not homophobic or transphobic. He texted me after Carl Weathers passed away. And that was only, what, two months Which ago? Which is very recently, yes. We had our conversation and it was beautiful. One thing he did say was, thank you. You and Carl Weathers have always been protectors. And he knows what that means. And I know what that means. And I wish I could tell why. We basically left it at, I can't wait to give you a big hug. That's really sad, too, because that means that his personal opinions and his and his actual personality is vastly different from that which is portrayed front center in the camera, right? So it sounds like he's not a bad person in private, but is willing to throw you under the bu bus in public, which means he's not a good person. Exactly. And, you know, he might be willing to humanize Gina Carano, even though they have political disagreements. Yep. But here he is on his Twitter feed not too long ago, basically calling all Trump supporters Nazis. Yep. And that's arguably way more incendiary and divisive than anything Gina Carano ever said. Nor did he get into any trouble for that whatsoever, because we understand yeah. that that's not actually what's going on here, that it's ideologically inclined beliefs from all of the staff under Kathleen Kennedy. I mean, really Disney as a whole, but mm -hmm. Kathleen Kennedy specifically in this example. And according to Gina Carano's lawsuit funded by Elon yep. Musk, that's an example of gender discrimination. Yep. Why not use their own rules against them? I don't genuinely think that Pedro Pascal was being treated better because of his maleness. I think it was because of his wokeness that he was getting treated better. But it, as long as we're playing that game, go ahead, you know, see if you can fight those claims in court, Disney. I'm really interested and intrigued to see what will happen with that and they ended this saying carano harbors no regrets about her behavior you won't find a perfect person in me but you will find a person who was doing her absolute best under one of the most aggressive unnecessary cancellations in hollywood history this has been one of the toughest growth spurts of my life and i don't plan on wasting what i've learned the journalist asked her referring to the lawsuit is there a number that would make you happy and she responded I know this might sound odd, but I'm not thinking about that. I'm thinking about clearing my name. I'm thinking about finally being healthier and having this monkey off my back and telling my story and just getting on with my life, finally. So from the sound of it, we're not going to get a Gina Carano's cancellation movie <laughs> because she doesn't want to dwell on it anymore, but I would still love to see that. Uh, and it kind of dovetails into what we're going to be talking a little bit about Johnny Depp, which is that mm -hmm. she's got to do this to clear her name. Not, it's not about money. It's about, you know, proving to the public that this was not her fault and mm -hmm. she did nothing wrong. It's about principles. And I've noticed that most of the social media responses to this so far are giving her zero grace. Oh, they're, no, they're not giving I mean, her any slack. One of them responded to her comment about Pedro Pascal and said, the way that he tried helping her and she twisted his words, the audacity of this effing a-hole, I'm glad she's suffering the consequences the, of her actions. The worst part is the most common sentiment that I saw repeated was, he tried to help her, she had this coming. Which is basically saying that, he tried to help her by telling her to be disingenuous and she refused to bend the knee. Therefore, mm -hmm. she deserves all she gets, which just proves that whatever your political ideology, you're a bootlicker mm -hmm. and that you just want people to be disingenuously supportive of whatever your establishment beliefs are. I don't know if they're bootlickers so much as they're basically preschoolers. They're like they want celebrities to speak to them like they're their kindergarten teachers. Right. They don't really care whether Gina Carano genuinely believes any of this nonsense. Towing the line is the only important part um, because like representation matters or something. But if Pedro Pascal was speaking to Gina Carano in any wording even similar mm -hmm. to what she relayed here, he's being disingenuous too. And they know that and they don't even care. Well, They're just gonna like, worship their woke daddy. Yeah, It's crazy. Look, and I, I see sketch therapy in the chat going uh, going wild about saying this isn't about old movies versus new movies, that it's it's about politics. And yes, you are correct. There was a backdrop on this that had to do with people talking about uh, love of the old films, them not getting back the original trio together for the new trilogy, mm -hmm. Ryan Johnson's take on everything in The Last Jedi, all that stuff. Yes, you are correct. It does come back to politics. We didn't expound on that because that really wasn't the point of this article. The point of this article is to see where she is, how she's gotten to where she's been since you know 
uh, all of this happened, I am still ultimately surprised that the Hollywood Reporter was willing to run this story at all. I don't think to be honest, that it's indicative, indicative of a change in the belief of the Hollywood system because gender ideology is far too important to Hollywood right now for them to risk championing someone like Gina Carano again, even though Gina Carano really hasn't said anything negative about most of that other than she doesn't want to be bullied by online activists. So in that case, are you of the belief that she probably paid um, or her talent agency paid for this to get I would written? Love, I would love to know. I would love yeah. to know how this article <clears throat> came to pass. Because like, I was even surprised. Like, look, they said they saw her in a hotel room, but they didn't get new pictures of her for no. this article. They recycled old photos. The If this article, and somebody also pointed out, like I said, that I would have loved for this article to come out three years ago. And they said, well, the Daily Wire did this. I said, yes, but the Daily Wire audience is speaking to the, to the already to the converted. To the Daily Wire. It's, it's already, yeah. you're preaching to the converted in that one yeah. right it would have been good to see one of these mainstream outlets that claim to be journalists and not pundits and claim to not be ideologically inclined to give space and give headline to someone to see if they can prove to their audience like look it's not about this it's that i've been misunderstood and they weren't willing to do that now we're three four how i don't know how many it's years been later four, basically so, four years since gina was canceled and this one doesn't really feel like it's died down in the respect of the people that don't like her the people that it's it's like johnny depp and amber heard the people that really care about those stories really care about those stories and you're not going to get anything different from hollywood because they care too much about gender ideology mm -hmm. so i don't see this changing and i don't see any more of these outlets being willing to risk giving her the platform, even though they should. I mean, maybe that will, maybe the Hollywood Reporter yeah. putting a spotlight on her, that mm -hmm. might open the door for other mainstream outlets, mm -hmm. but it's highly unlikely. Yep. Um, all right, let's look at Super Chats. Chats. Andrew Jacobs said, hi, Mary. Brian Atlas is dead wrong. You, not the boys, are responsible for that OF girl turning her life over to Christ. So kudos to you. Hi, Bert. Okay, I'm of a third opinion. I think that uh, the boys and the whatever podcast had nothing to do with it, and I think I had nothing to do with it. And if she's being genuine, I think that God had everything to do with it. So no one should take credit for it at all. My God. <laughs> How about that? God is an awesome guy. <laughs> He raised. <laughs> let's, uh, let's do two okay. more. And uh, of course, that's a topic we're going to get into in a little bit. Yes. Shane H. Wilder said, happy Monday, Brett and Mary. A new Omen movie is coming out April 3rd. They're playing up the Catholic aspect. These demoniacs just want to keep their IP while crapping all over the church. Blech. I never saw Omen. Did you ever see that? I don't watch horror movies. Uh, I mean, I'll, I'll watch Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey, part two, when it comes out, but I haven't really cared about horror movies since the 90s. Look, I know that religious-themed horror movies are a big thing, and there's a lot of commentary there that's done by Hollywood. We've had our discussions It's more about often that. religiously themed than not at this yeah, point. Yeah, well, it's because possession movies yeah. are popular, and possession goes hand in hand. Yeah. Right. Do one more. Jacob Paradis, if you're living in the northeastern part of Wisconsin, or if you feel like taking a long drive, that would be a really long drive, be sure to check out the Spring Craft Fair and Market in, I have no idea, Kaukuna? Ooh. Um, there, there you'll find Nars bar, Narbar's candles. Okay, if any of you live near He also has Wisconsin, one more under there that says March 23rd, 10 a.m. Okay, yeah. you heard it here first. All right, let's hold, let's hold off on the rest and we'll come back okay. after the fact. Let's talk about Johnny Depp. It's it, yeah. like Gina Carano's story. It's the story that will just go on till the end of time. <laughs> so a journalist named Dan Wooten recently issued an official apology to Johnny Depp. And what resulted was an absolute firestorm from Johnny Depp supporters and Amber Heard supporters. So here's the reason. Dan Wooten was responsible for the initial lawsuit that Johnny Depp filed against the UK media outlet The Sun. He wrote this article that was basically defamatory of Johnny Depp, and the title called him a wife beater. And he says, I didn't write that title. I just wrote the column. And honestly, it wasn't even about Johnny Depp. It was about J.K. Rowling. So here was the original title in The Sun. How can J.K. Rowling be, quote, genuinely happy to cast wife-beater Johnny Depp in her film? 
Dan Wooten says, uh, basically, he was calling out J.K. Rowling because she was super pro Me Too movement. She was talking about how you need to believe all women. But when it came to Johnny Depp, she didn't believe Amber Heard and she hired Johnny Depp for the Fantastic Beasts franchise regardless. Dan Wooten says, I was just trying to point out the hypocrisy there, which I totally understand. But what ensued was this civil suit between Johnny Depp, the son, and Dan Wooten himself. And actually, Johnny Depp lost that lawsuit. If you recall, he lost the libel suit. The judge ruled in the son's favor. And that preceded the defamation trial that started in 2022. So it didn't set a good precedent. But basically, it was a split decision if you think about it now. So Dan Wooten says that over time, he has come to uh, actually think Johnny Depp needed more understanding and he had no place to get involved in Johnny Depp's private relationship and private life. Mm. He should have never done that. So he said he learned from his own experience. After being falsely accused by a deranged ex, why I now admit it was wrong to ever get involved in Johnny Depp's private life. So let's take a look at a couple minutes of this apology video before we news in opine. the mainstream media today is that so few players are prepared to admit when they got something horribly wrong. In the culture war, folk dig deeper into their trenches and sometimes there is little chance to take a breath and realize the most sensible thing would be to reverse course or at least address errors with a degree of nuance. Today, I finally get the opportunity to do just that. I have stayed silent for many years on Johnny Depp versus Amber Heard, despite ending up an unwilling party in the former Hollywood golden couple's bid for mutual destruction in a British courtroom. With five years of hindsight and a changed personal outlook, thanks to my own MSM cancellation, I now admit that I should never have got involved in the carnival of commentary on the catastrophic breakdown of Johnny's relationship. Having spent the last six months battling deranged lies from an abusive ex designed to destroy my career through a social media campaign support- I was told women never do that. It was a, an ex-boyfriend, this guy's gay. As soon as I was saying, I was like, never mind. By a yep. left as criminal working- <laughs> Never mind, men are evil. I was wrong. <laughs> For the Believe fantasists at Byline Times, I know how difficult it can be to defend yourself against those sorts of smears, even though I have now been fully exonerated in two separate investigations by the Metropolitan and Scottish Police. The hatred that some former lovers carry is disturbingly enough to see them manipulate the truth to bring down their ex at almost any cost. Now here's for the important nuance that many of Johnny's rabid supporters might not be prepared to accept. This is not my bid to in any way attack or cause further issues for Amber Heard. She never wanted to be dragged through to personally costly and in the case of the US reputationally devastating court cases. I got to know her just a little after our careers became surprisingly intertwined and even though our politics couldn't be more different, believe the public perception of her is unfair. Okay, pause here. It's unfortunate that- <clears throat> After Johnny Depp lost the libel suit in the UK, um, Dan Wooten took this victory selfie with Amber Heard. So it definitely seemed like he was taking Amber Heard's side at the time against Johnny Depp. Mm -hmm. And he regrets doing that, probably because the tide of public opinion changed and he's moving along with it. Mm -hmm. But now he's talking about wokeness and he's talking about how he loves J.K. Rowling now. And, you know, he, he thinks that Me Too went too far and he's against censorship and, I, and I'm trying to be an unbiased journalist now. It definitely seems like too little too late. It seems yeah. a little convenient timing for journalists to finally be coming around to honest tactics. A lot of them are going to still yeah. be doing that now because they sense that the change in the, in the tides. Because the culture war might have been basically been won by the uh i guess ostensibly the right yeah. i don't even know if i buy that i i just think that there's whatever is happening yeah. we can see what's happening right you agree like things are shifting I, things are shifting and like some people feel like in order to stay popular and relevant yeah. 
They need to be part of the resistance movement. So Chris Cuomo just got like hired by Patrick Bet David at Valuetainment and everyone is like, what is going on? And then Don Lemon has this show on X and everyone's like, this this did literally see, makes no sense. Did you see Don Lemon's uh, demands? No. Uh, what he, did he, he say? He wanted, what was it? Okay, so it was like, Five million or eight million dollars a year, <laughs> uh, a cyber truck, stake in Twi- in Twix, and all this other stuff. And uh, and his- he wanted free steaks sent to his house and free Twix bars. Yes, all of those. <laughs> That's exactly right. He was like, "That's Look. insane." He's but like, also, diet of a champion. Yeah. Um, <laughs> damn, what an entitled loser. Yes. Okay, so as you can imagine, after this apology got posted. Dan Wooten got a bunch of hate, not only from the Amber Heard stands who are saying, how dare you turn against Amber Heard when she needs your support the most? And then the Johnny Depp stands were all attacking Dan Wooten as well because they said, you did this to Johnny Depp, you ruined his life, and now right at the moment when it's convenient for you, you're going to come back around and be the voice of reason. How dare you? So everyone is just angry at this guy now. I mean, I'm relatively ambivalent, but I think the whole thing is so embarrassing because, I mean, these are like grown adults. Like, you're a grown ass man or woman, and you run an Amber Heard Stan account or a Johnny Depp Stan account? Like, grow up. Like, stop worshiping either one of these people. And it's kind of irrelevant to the truth of either of these lawsuits. It really is. I think it's a good thing because I think what it means is if you've got enough time on your hands to run an Amber Heard or a Johnny Depp Stan account, you're probably pretty set in life. You've got a good job. You're kind of like one of those characters in the movie Office Space. They're not living under a bridge. No, they're not. Like, you kind of have to have (laughs) uh, some money to run a Stan account. They definitely work from home, quote unquote. Yes. So I found this deranged tweet from one of the Johnny Depp supporters saying, uh, they, they like posted this picture of Johnny Depp in the courtroom. Can you can you pull that up? It's like Johnny Depp in the courtroom looking sad and, and stressed out. And they said, see this man here, Dan Wooten? This is what you and Amber Heard did. Give Johnny Depp the apology he so rightly deserves. Okay, he literally did just apologize to, Dan, to Johnny Depp. So what more do you want? Okay, and then he did this interview with Megyn Kelly where he reiterated all of that same stuff. He said, this is what can happen when an ex has an ax to grind, is actuated by malice. They'll make up terrible things designed to destroy your career and your life. I'm not saying that was what Amber Heard did, but we don't know. And that's, I think, what we've been both saying on this so, podcast. Well, I mean, that's not a popular opinion to take in this because you, you, yeah. do, you, you're you more rewarded to take strong sides on things, which I just can't do. And he said, she said things. The only reason I've even, I even took a harder stance on the Johnny Depp one is because <clears throat> of the audio of her, which is abhorrent, mm-hmm. right? But if there wasn't that, like if there isn't, anything like that, then what am I supposed to say? I don't know. I don't know these people. I can speak on what the s- social ramifications of it are, but I can't really speak to these people because I don't know them. Yeah. And who you are front facing is very different from who you are behind the scenes. The whole topic we just did about what Pedro Pascal says that. Yeah. I mean, in this whole like cluster F that was going on, the hashtag Johnny Depp is a survivor started trending, which is how I found out this happened. And it was just like fan cams and all of these deranged posts. And it's like, it's not 2022 anymore. Like we all need to move past this. But then I saw this new report that Johnny Depp's former co-star Lola Glaudini has accused him of accosting her on set of the 2001 crime thriller, sorry, Blow. I had never heard of this movie before. Did you know about this movie? What's Have you seen called? this movie? Blow? Yep. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. So basically, Lola Glaudini was a small background role. She wasn't supposed to even have any dialogue with Johnny Depp in this movie. But here is what she recalled in a recent interview on a podcast. She said, The very first day, I haven't even met Johnny Depp at this point. I'm on a bearskin rug in a bikini. Ted Dem comes over to me and he's like, okay, Lola, when Johnny Depp says this certain word, I want you to burst out laughing like he just told you the funniest thing over here. We're in the background, the deep background, right? Depp says his monologue and I go, ha ha. 
and Johnny Depp walks over to me, sticks his finger in my face, and I'm in a bikini on the ground like this, and he comes over and he goes, who the F do you think you are? Who the F do you think you are? Shut the F up. I'm out here, I'm trying to effing say my lines, and you're out effing pulling focus, you effing idiot. Oh no, oh no, it's not so funny. Now you can shut up. Now you can effing shut the F up. The quiet that you are right now, that's how you effing stay. She continued, this was my first stu studio movie. I've just done indie movies until then. And I have the star who I idolized, who I am so excited to work with, reamed me in my face. The only thing that <laughs> I have going through my head is don't cry, don't cry, don't cry. He reamed her in the face, huh? She later called her father who told her, you have two choices right now. You can either say F this, F you, or you never let him see you sweat. And I was like, all right, I want to stay in the that's movie. That's a W from dad, by the way. That's, that's good put advice. up or shut up, good advice. Yeah. And she said that Johnny Depp later offered her a, quote, non-apology apology, saying, you know, I'm doing this Boston accent. It's really effing with me. <laughs> that was his excuse. He's like, look, I've had to talk in this, in this awful accent. I'm really sorry. I mean, in, in a salty mood. Look, I mean, to, in comparison, I still think the Christian Bale on set rant is far superior, but that's just me. What about the Tom Cruise on set rant? Uh, I think the Christian Bale on set rant goes down in history as the preferred rant for all people uh, when it comes to yelling on set. Okay. Uh. Excited for this. Sorry. Think for once. I want you off the fucking set. <laughs> what is going on? I want you off the fucking set, you prick. <laughs> now don't just be sorry. Think for one fucking second. What the, the fuck are you doing? Are you professional or not? Yes, I am. Do I fucking walk around and rip that? No, shut the fuck up, Bruce. Do I want? No. No. Don't shut me up. Am I going to walk around and rip your fucking lights down in the middle oh of the scene? Goodness. Then why the fuck are you walking right through? Ah, oh, da 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 da, like this in the background. What the fuck is it with you? What don't you fucking understand? You got any fucking idea? Wait, why does he look like a Minecraft it's creeper? It's fucking distracting having somebody walking up behind Bryce in the middle okay uh i recommend that was pretty iconic i recommend yeah. everyone um go and um <laughs> and what listen to the whole thing but look you know everyone the, has uh, those days you know, that's not real the, the audio is real the video is fake oh the video is fake. Yes. Okay, okay okay so okay. the audio is out there but then they like okay. they cut it to that which is why his face is blurred out okay got it <laughs> but you know everyone has those days where they just are screaming at people and cussing people out. It's just normal Hollywood behavior. Well, I mean, it, it, we, who was the direct when we when we talked about Amsterdam and we talked about the director oh, who had the on screen uh, had the on screen blow up. Okay, so it, when you when you work in that industry and creative heads butt, you know, you know, when creative people butt heads, it's pretty common for people to freak out and have these types of disagreements. David O. Russell. Yes, thank you. Yeah, yeah. David O. Russell's he has like a big reputation for acting like that and Christian Bale was in that movie yep. so that must have been pretty tense so I mean Lola Gladini she's like look at least he wasn't uh, yelling at me <laughs> well a guy in a Minecraft costume it's, it's, a, it's a little ridiculous to use Lola Gladini's story of getting yelled at as like this is proof that he actually was abusive to Amber Heard like exactly you're reaching okay let's continue super chats not that John Stewart said, Brett is correct. Favreau had to fight the studio to get RDJ. They thought he was going to be a liability. Yes, okay, so that's, that was my point. I was saying that an unknown quantity is someone where they hire them and they don't really know if they're gonna be reliable or not. And that's always a risk, especially with the amount of money it takes to, to make these movies. You can't really put a whole bunch of weight behind somebody who's gonna bring you a bunch of bad press. Look what's happening with Rachel Zegler right now. For instance, on top Wait, what, of many, what has been happening with Rachel Zegler? She's not talking a lot. That's for sure. That's uh, there's no interviews going. We've on, had such a reprieve. We're going to have to talk more about it once the movie <laughs> comes closer to its release date. Yeah, let's do two more. Michael Stone Cipher. Um, let's get a crisis party, guys. Come on. Said need Pooverse versus magical Negroes movie. <laughs> they can make that. Somebody like else the, can make that. They face off. Okay. 
Uh, Shane H. Wilder said, under the Mary dictatorship, can I be appointed supreme minister of memes? I will ensure that there is a meme in every household. There you go. That's well, you'll be fair. called like the attorney meme general, like something go. cooler than that. All right. You know? uh, let's hold off on the rest, Mary. You're going to have to give everybody some background yeah. on what's going on with this girl. So a now former OnlyFans girl who goes by the name Nala or Nala Fitness or Nala the Ninja. She recently came up with a TikTok where she claims that she is now converted to Christianity. She found Jesus Christ and she is renouncing her past behavior and she is not going to be doing online sex work anymore. And this was a shock to a lot of people including myself um 20 dollars super chat here from pat the plumber says i freak out once a week and i'm a plumber oh yeah that's not good that's not a good pairing but does but does nala freak out that's the question (laughs) so uh yeah she said i'm giving it all up for christ um and this was shocking to me because i have met nala and spoken with her a bit when i met her 10 months ago after we were on the whatever podcast together And uh, there was a clip that went relatively viral uh, where I confronted and challenged her because she introduced herself to the panel. um, You know, once we were on camera and once the cameras were rolling, it's like her affect just totally changed. So it's a persona. It it was a persona. And she was doing this like hypersexualized kind of pornified like anime girl act. Okay. And she was making all of these like faces and um, like she's, she calls herself the Ahegao queen or whatever. Like she was making all these faces and noises and stuff. And I was, I immediately was like, okay, this is a lot to take in. And this definitely doesn't seem like your authentic personality. It seems like you're putting on a persona to advertise yourself to simps and she was just like, you don't know me. You don't know anything about me. How dare you? And all of these girls were like snapping back at me on her behalf. And it was just kind of, it was pretty contentious for me to even say that. And then, you know, after the podcast was over, we um, went in like a group of us to in and out And uh, I was like hearing a little bit more from Nala about her personal background. And she was talking about some of the ambitions that she had before she had ever comprehended the idea of being a digital prostitute. And it was actually just really sad to hear that such a driven and vivacious young person went down such a self-destructive path and was so, um, it, she, was, she was definitely not receptive to me challenging her. And I understand why you would be that way on a public platform. But it was just, it left a big impact on me and I essentially just felt like, you know, this is not someone who is, living up to what god intended for them okay so if in fact nala is genuine in converting to christianity and putting this all behind her um and seeking redemption then i'm really happy about that if she's not genuine then okay i mean i'm not gonna lose any sleep at night over that but that's unfortunate but let's just hear in her own words what she said on her tiktok um, so I started OnlyFans about four years ago and I climbed to top 0.01%. I'm not saying that to brag. I'm saying that the devil can truly give you things in this life. He has a budget though. He can only go so far. So a couple million. Okay, great. The devil can do that sometimes, right? But I truly have gifts and talents. I just did not use them in the right way. And I'm reaching out to anyone who's like, questioning what they should do in their life. And I turn to corn. That's what we're going to call it. Okay. So this is just me sharing my personal, personal experience with you. So I reached out and did corn for four years. Um, and I showed myself all over the internet. I said crazy things on podcasts. If you don't know the, I love cheating podcast. Um, and so I met this person who's now my partner and he truly showed me God's love. He was sending me Bible verses, praying over me, and we were just friends. So like the Holy Spirit was truly working and moving, but I was in such a rebellion against it because I was like, God doesn't love me. I've had to work this hard for this many years because no one cared about me. My family didn't care about me. Christianity is a cage. 
it's not Christianity, it's religion. Religion is the cage. And unfortunately, I didn't have like good role models growing up. My parents, my siblings, I didn't have good friends. I truly fell into darkness. And I was, like I said, I was top 0.01% creator. Like that is crazy. That is a crazy milestone to reach in that industry. So I made what I made, I did what I did, but I wanna share you, share with you guys the truth of it all because I am now giving it all up for Christ. I am now truly a believer. I would never take it back. God radically saved me from this darkness. And let me tell you again, the devil has a budget, but God does not. God literally made you. All right, all right, all right. The video is pretty long. So, you know, if you haven't seen it yourself, you can go find it yourself. Um, But yeah, before that, she was talking about her upbringing. She was raised in this strict Baptist household. She was a pastor's kid and she was just rebellious from day one. And she didn't, you know, have a lot of familial support or support from friends. And that's kind of a common story that you hear uh, with people that go into sex work, right? Thank you. Thank you. Let's get a second one. I just want to dance. You just want to dance. You just feel the beat. Okay. Okay. Immediately, immediately after Nala posted this video, there were tons of responses just saying that this is a joke. She's not being serious. This is all a ruse. She's using this to market her OnlyFans. She's not actually going to follow through on it. And uh, $20 super chat here from Corey Anderson says, so I tried to give everyone the benefit of the doubt and I was trying to defend Nala's redemption arc. Uh, on a Pearl tweet, and none of them wanted to give her a second chance. I hope she succeeds and gets a haircut. <laughs> well, the red hair is a problem for another day to be solved. Um, but yeah, there are a lot of people just who, <laughs> like, they don't want to believe that it's possible for a girl with an OnlyFans to ever quit that lifestyle, to ever find forgiveness or redemption of any kind, to ever be loved, really, which is pretty dark like the one concern I had after I watched this video actually there were two one is I worried that this is like really deep satire and I'm falling for it and secondly I worried that she might have just converted based on the influence of this guy that she's dating now that's what I thought yeah. and what if what happens when, when they break up gone, or yeah. if they break up yeah. whatever you like need to, it's kind of okay so you this need is, a deeper foundation this is something that, that happens a lot when addicts get sober right mm-hmm. if you get if you get sober with the help of another person but then you don't seek help uh, on your own you know a lot of times the breakup of that relationship will trigger uh, a relapse mm-hmm. and a fall back into bad behavior which is very possible uh, we are going to get into the fact that her OnlyFans is still up. We're going to get into the fact that uh, all the information that's come out since then. We're going to talk about that. But the point is for me, when I, when stories like this come up, I err on the side of suspicious in all things. I am. I'm just uh, perhaps because it's uh, as somebody who's not religious, I kind of ascribe to the same belief you have, which is that like if she, if she's better, good. Like if she's, if she's moved on, good. I'm, I'm glad for her. Mm-hmm. If she doesn't, it's no skin off my back. It doesn't affect me in any way. But I would rather live in a world where redemption is possible and where we can make good on our past bad behavior because living in a world where nobody's willing to forgive you, if there's no forgiveness, even though you shouldn't necessarily seek the forgiveness of strangers, obviously that's not really going to do you much good to seek forgiveness from strangers on the internet because they're going to be cruel and they're going to treat you cruelly. I would rather live in a world where I believe that forgiveness is the norm, even if I don't really think that that's how it is these days. Mm-hmm. Um, that makes me sad, and I would rather err on the side of what doesn't make me sad, and that's that she means well, <clears throat> and that that's what this is. But at the end of the day, if it's not, it doesn't affect me. Like I'm not, I have no, I have no stock in this. At well, all. I, I think there's a reason that the poll today was asking a more general question. We're not asking you whether you think Nala's redemption is genuine. That's an answer that nobody has um, except for God. But in general, I think that a lot of people preemptively came to the conclusion that it's impossible for a woman woman who had an OnlyFans to find redemption. And then they collected the evidence after the fact, okay, to like retroactively prove they're already 
settled conclusion that these women's lives are hopeless and you know they might as well just themselves like that's basically what a lot of people think and i think if you're saying that if you're reiterating that you are doing satan's work for him it's the same mindset that people that are super into progressivism believed into woke ideology believed. yeah no redemption possible you, you, there is no redemption you cannot come back from your past sins you are evil you are irredeemable you might as well just go live in a box and die and yeah. I don't believe that that's a world we want to live in. I yeah, I was. I would rather be wrong about this and have her fall back into her bad behavior than subject myself to a life of such cynicism. Gordon Shumway sent twenty dollars, saying redemption is possible. Michael Knowles interviewed a former corn star who is a pastor now. I also remember Vanity from the '80s who did nude shoots and a lot of drugs, and she left it all for her faith. Let's see. Yeah, that's the only answer we really have is just like, let's wait and see what happens. But she has posted about deleting her OF. People are confused because the page is active. It's up. Um, all of it is kind of intentionally confusing because this is the way that OnlyFans as a platform operates is you can't officially deactivate your page until the people paying for it have finished their last monthly pay period, right? Yeah. So... Um, let's look, it let's would look take about post. a month for it to get deleted anyway. Let's look at this post from Reclaim Your Throne. This was their yes. update on it. So it says, Nala the Ninja just disabled her free OnlyFans and upgraded it to a paywall account. She changed her monthly fee from eight uh, from free to eight ninety nine to ten dollars a month after immense pressure from the internet, mainly me, since trad cucks fell for the grift and fully supported her taking advantage of horny young white Christian male simps so they can lust after her. And four months after being baptized, she deleted all of the the public content from her page however reinstating the paywall automatically renews all current subscribers i don't know if that's actually true um yeah there's no like source um, for making that. it possible for her to delete the account uh, making it impossible for her to delete the account until all subscriptions end the only way to do that is uh if she makes the account free once again which she won't so uh, not only did she take advantage of young white christian male simps she also has them trapped in a paywall loop she sounds like an evil supervillain, and is providing <laughs> zero content she is still active in the dms and requesting men to pay her for porn that would be removed from the public page in order to focus okay. Okay. Specifically on DM Here's content. the thing. There's no proof provided mm -hmm. that um, there's no like definitive proof here that is provided for this allegation that Nala is still DMing with people who are subscribed to the OF mm -hmm. and having them pay for porn via DMs. There's no proof of that except for a screenshot that has a timestamp that says yesterday and it shows her profile pic from before she deleted all of the content on the page. So there's literally no proof of that, first of all. There is no proof given that reinstating the paywall automatically renews all current subscribers. And also, you're kind of just throwing this accusation out there that all of the uh, incidentally white male Christian men who are believing in Nala's Mm -hmm. uh, genuine redemption arc that they're doing so out of lust for her. I think that's a huge leap to make logically that you also have no proof for. Um, I'm open to believing it's genuine. I'm open to finding out once and for all that it's not genuine. I do like but this response. Somebody, just, said, somebody says there is no being played for a true Christian. All back, all backslide. If her conversion is real, time will tell. If not, we lament the misfortune and continue on. The only ones fooled are the people full of hate. And and to me, mm -hmm. it's not about being full of hate. It's about a certain level of hope and ambivalence all mixed together. Her life is uh, the life of somebody who I do not know personally has no effect on me. Uh, I have strong views on what it means for the public at large, but given that I don't even have the same views on pornography that many in this community do, I do like the idea of somebody finding something that means more to them than their current, th than what they are currently experiencing and moving on from something they feel that they have outgrown. Personal growth, more so than just the, uh, um, the moral nature of the career, right? You'd hope that somebody's moved on to something that makes them feel more whole as a person, that they've grown, right? <laughs> Uh, I don't know. It's uh, we'll have to like, and like you said, the whole stuff about the information on the account, it's it's designed to be confusing. Yeah. And we could, I guess, we could look into this in the future. But uh, I have I, not made a conclusion either way. Yeah, I'm just saying, if it's true, good for her, happy for her. If it's not true, okay. Oh wait, wait. it says uh, <laughs> uh, I'm not reading that. 
I'm, I'm, glad, I'm happy for you. Congrats. Or I'm sorry that happened. I'm not reading all that. Yeah. But basically that. Yeah. And um, I think that the rhetoric around this has just been very toxic for no reason. A lot of the people who were really, really mean to Nala are telling themselves that they deserve the credit for her becoming Christian, which is absolute BS. Mm -hmm. That is not the way that you reach someone, and look, especially I not a woman. And I'm not even gonna tell myself that I have any credit yeah. for her becoming Christian if that's what she did, because I don't believe that I truly had a part to play in that. If I did, that's great. But if I didn't, that, I mean, that's what I think. I think that if she's converted, then the credit, the the glory yeah. belongs to God, right? So who is anyone here to claim credit for, for someone else's heart changing? And, for and those also, oh, God. sorry, it's just, I'm looking at all of her TikTok comments and I constantly see people saying bop, bop lore, like bop, bop, bop. They're all saying bop and I'm like, does bop not mean song anymore? So I like looked it up and apparently bop it refers to a woman who will give head to anyone, basically a promiscuous woman. And they're saying like, uh, bops can't have redemption. You're always gonna, once a bop, always a bop. And I'm like, you just gotta be such a bitter person, you know? Like you gotta be a really bitter, hateful, angry human being. Cause it's just, that is not true for anyone. And I will reiterate that redemption is available to anyone who earnestly seeks it. And if we don't know whether she's earnestly seeking redemption at this point, that's fine. We'll find out or we won't. Look, in the thing, like when I see the other comments that are saying that are, that are hesitant to believe her, I get the sentiment and I understand mm -hmm. 100%. I saw several points in that video that she had that kind of made me wonder and that's okay. I just, uh, I'm not going to tie any of my hopes and dreams to the success or failure of somebody turning their life around. And I know that specifically because as an addict, people approach your sobriety, my sobriety, anyone who tries to get clean, they approach that with the same level of skepticism. And there are plenty of people that take that exact same approach to people in my position who have worked very hard over the years to stop doing drugs. You are not capable of getting sober. You're just a junkie who has managed to not use for a specific length of time. Just a matter of time before you fall back into the pattern. Well, that's not hope. And mm -hmm. that's, that's what you can call the real world. And I suppose a certain level of cynicism and, um, and distrust is, is understandable. But it would be weird for a person in my position who did have to pull himself up from a bad situation and put family and friends through that to not at least allow another person the uh, opportunity to do the same thing, mm -hmm. even though it's not the same circumstances. Yeah, well said. Okay, uh, Seringo Productions said Kathleen Kennedy couldn't make Gina into a carbon copy. <laughs> carbon copy spelled with two Ks, uh, of course. Corey Anderson said, Mary, do you ever wear vertical stripes? Do you ever wear vertical stripes? Are you a vertical stripes person? Aren't you far more likely to find things that are sold with horizontal stripes? Like, I mean, it's not like intentional. Do, but... do horizontal stripes make you look wider and do vertical stripes make you look taller? If vertical stripes make you look taller, maybe I'll get myself some vertical stripes. I don't know if I buy that, <laughs> to be honest. Yurishima Otaru said Don wanted to do an interview in space too. What? Don Lemon? He also said Christian Bale and Tom Cruise did nothing wrong in their rants. I'm, I'm with you, man. Of course, I'm, I'm biased. I so. disagree with Tom Cruise's point, honestly. Um, what, what, what about it? What, what do you disagree with? I think that he was just defending BS rules for good reasons. And I don't, I wouldn't do that if I were him. I mean, if I was, if I he invested. has so much money. He could make the damn movie himself. He doesn't need to rely on the studio, but he, he was stomping around money. and screaming. He did. In, he's an investor in that film. He's a producer. Okay, if you, he's, if his you, finances are tied to it. If you are not a true believer in masking and vaccine policies, make the damn movie yourself and, instead of dr forcing people to go along with draconian rules. And get all the, and just pay the fines every day. That would add up. Whatever, you're Tom Cruise. I'm just saying, I don't think it's I don't ethical. think, no, honestly, like, w when you think about how many people are on a set 
and each one of those is its own separate infraction with a fine. I don't think even Tom Cruise's or, money is that. Or deep. if he disagrees with it, he should have spoken out that he disagreed with those rules. That's a fair Nate sense. Garland sent twenty dollars. Thief on the cross went home to paradise with Christ. All have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. If someone can't repent and be redeemed by the blood of Jesus, no one can. Right. No one is past the point of no return. Basically. I just like I just yesterday. Unless you're dead. I made some post yesterday the other day. So I don't want and it was just it was just an offhand comment. I don't even remember what I was it might have been reading about Nala. But I just said like I don't want to live in a world where forgiveness and and such is just looked down upon. Well, thankfully, um you don't live in that world, so there's no need to to be sad about it because that's not reality. Uh, Dave Collins said, I miss the old days when movies were made to entertain people. You Thank need you. to move! Dance party! Third crisis party! Or even just to make money without oh. pushing a political or social justice message. Okay, yes. By the way, guys, total aside, since he's talking about movies and we're talking about movies uh, uh, temporarily, over the weekend, I watched the... Tom Selleck starring Jesse Stone made for TV movies about the character Jesse Stone. Uh, and they are unbelievably boring and inoffensive and awesome. Okay, not boring in a bad way. They're just kind of a little bit predictable, but very calming. I recommend everybody, if you're looking for something, to put on in the background a good, uh, I don't even know how, to, it's just a detective story, right? He's, he's, a, he's a police chief. Murder mysteries all taking place in this one town. I do recommend checking them out. They're all on Amazon Prime. There's a whole crap ton of them. Also, the first one came out in like 2006. Very much younger Viola Davis wearing a, a, either a wig or like a wicked, like her hair had been straightened. It's, it's crazy. Like she's very young in that movie. Um, they're fun. They're, they're a very, very chill thing to put on in the background while you're working. I do recommend checking them out. Plus it's got Tom Selleck and Tom Selleck rules. I am, I finished Interview with a Vampire's sequel, The, the Queen of the Damned, and I looked at the, mm. the details. So the movie poster is just Aaliyah. Mm -hmm. And then the main character in the background, <laughs> and Aaliyah, Aaliyah has was huge like at that time. Aaliyah, but Aaliyah has like twenty minutes of screen time, yep. and it starts an hour into the movie. Yep. There's no singing, and um, she plays this like Egyptian princess or whatever who's a vampire. Yep, she was a bankable, and I realized like, Percy, that it wasn't the racism back then. Like she was just a bankable name. Oh yeah, and she. The movie made like $45 million at the box office, but I, I'm pretty sure it only even made that much given how hated it is because Aaliyah was on the cover mm -hmm. and it was literally released like a few months after she died, which mm -hmm. is crazy. Like that's some of the last surviving footage that exists of Aaliyah is being in this god awful movie. Um, guys, Billy Baldwin was in one of those Jesse Stone movies. Billy Baldwin being the Baldwin brother oh. who supported Trump in 2016. Yeah, I, that one. <laughs> I imagine those discussions back and forth. It's so funny. He just, uh, he, I actually think that him and his other brother um, are, have better looks for Hollywood. Like, uh, what's this, Stephen Baldwin? So what? Alec is is not. No, I, okay, so Billy Baldwin, just, Bill, no, it's not about looking good. It's about the other two have very distinct bad guy looks. They look like they play great bad guys. I don't know what the fuck Alec Baldwin is supposed to look like. He just he looks, looks like, like a bad guy. Uh, well, the other two have better looking bad guy faces Alec as far as I'm looks, concerned. Well, <laughs> um, who is the Gamergate one? The one who coined Gamergate. That's, he's, he's, not not a bald, to, he's not a Baldwin. He's not a Baldwin. He's a Baldwin, but he's not. He's not related to Related the to the yeah. Baldwin. Correct. <laughs> Pat the Plumber said, Mary Morgan, savior of sins, lover of zins. Oh, goodness. Let's do one more. Mr. Anderpson said, Nala's OF still up. She dropped the paywalls, get more subs, and sends $10 auto DMs for spicy pics. Good job at checking the story first, guys. We went through We this. did go through these details. Yep. Yes. And it's not as clear cut as that. Yep. Disco right, Jensen. Let's, uh, let's hold off on the rest and we'll come back after the fact. Let's go ahead okay. and uh, let's talk about uh, <laughs> Lindsay Lohan and the fact that Lindsay Lohan is a crypto fascist. I personally love the career renaissance that Lindsay Lohan is going through right now. She's just shamelessly starring in 
the most mid rom-coms imaginable that you would see on the Hallmark Channel. This one was released for St. Patrick's Day this weekend on Netflix. The title is Irish Wish. And isn't it just so fitting for redhead Miss Lohan to star in a movie with this title? And <laughs> a journalist at Vulture has accused this film of being many sinister things. So here's the title of their review. Irish Wish is a crypto-fascist, AI-generated harbinger of doom. How dare they say this about my birthday twin? How dare they? They will not get away with this. They will not! So basically, it has a Freaky Friday type of plot line where she's jealous of her friend who's getting married in Ireland, and she's in she's part of the wedding. She's always had a thing for her friend's fiance, and she just is this nerdy writer girl who doesn't know that she's hot, and she just makes this wish that she could marry Paul Kennedy instead of her friend. And as per Freaky Friday, she actually does switch places with her friend and she wakes up all of a sudden and she's engaged to this dream man of hers. So here's what this journalist had to say about the movie. Now that I've seen Netflix's latest film, Irish Wish, I realize I have been but a hapless pawn in a larger socio-political <laughs> plot to maintain the status quo to quell dissent, to replace much of the workforce with AI, to install a permanent Christian the theocratic dictator, and to make Ireland look weird for some reason. Irish Wish is a thinly veiled Trojan horse for conservative agenda, a crypto fascist work of art cluttered with right wing dog whistles and dialogue that could have only been written by a malevol malevolently programmed artificial intelligence. She continues, Lindsay Lohan's character Maddie exclusively wears one dress, which is apparently available in a variety of fabrics and prints, with a suspiciously high neckline and below-the-knee hemline that hints at the lurking specter of traditional family values. You know what a lot of this is, I think? A lot of it is, is people don't realize <laughs> just how much they're projecting their own kind of insanity onto a situation, right? I can go yeah. through and watch a movie one day and think something freaking insane but as long as i have the perspective in my brain i'm like check yourself look i realize i'm not in the best heads this, and this doesn't just happen with movies and stuff right sometimes i will watch stuff i can't think of an example off the top of my head but there are times i think absolutely insane shit while i'm watching things but i'm i've done enough kind of examine self-examination to know when i'm when i'm out there mm -hmm. when i'm really really out on the rocks and not not tethered to anything real yeah. It's about not actually typing it. Yeah, it's about not saying what you're thinking at all times. Gotta, I see all. 20, yeah, go ahead. Sent $20. Hello, Mary. Hello, Brett. According to my exceptional mathematical skills, they're not so exceptional. Episode 600 of PCC will be on Friday, April 26th. That is so soon. What? On a Friday. So mark your calendars, bitches. <laughs> The end is nigh. Let's go. Wait, Wait why is it the end? Wait, does that mean like the show is getting canceled after episode 600? Did uh, we do miss you know, the memo? Do you know, look, I live in constant fear that that's going to like, like literally. Okay. <laughs> here's one guys. morning. Tim is just going to be like, F it. I am one of those people that doesn't know how to enjoy good things when they're happening. I only know how to prepare sadly for the inevitable fall. Mm -hmm. So I have a very hard time. I'm like, when is it all going to fall apart? When will I not be able to talk about Lindsay Lohan being a crypto fascist for my job? Okay. So I want to think about that. Hopefully, I you know, by the end of April, we will still be syndicated. Ooh, I like this. Somebody so. says, uh, what is that? Nose Trap says, Brett's a crypto apathist. Yes, I am. I am. Oh, uh, that's not crypto. That's not cryptic at all. I'm you're, apathetic. You're I'm, very, I'm, very openly I'm and open. explicitly <laughs> apathetic about yeah. everything. So you're not a crypto apathist, I would say. Um, but yeah, they read into the fact that Lindsay Lohan's character is dressed in somewhat conservative outfits. Mm where they, they aren't showing all of her assets. They're like, so, she should have her titties hanging out that must to mean stop the patriarchy. That they, they called the stylist uh, a hands ma Handmaid's Tale ass stylist. 
for this. I pray Lindsay Lohan wrenches just... herself free from both her binding Netflix contract and its Handmaid's Tale ass stylist. So the Freaky Friday plot ensues. Maddie awakens suddenly in her new life where she is engaged to her dream man, Paul Kennedy. And he's an Irish man, okay? Paul is showering in her bathroom. She screams and covers her eyes, despite having wanted nothing else but to F Paul for years. She spends the rest of the movie assiduously avoiding all sexual contact, contact including kissing with her fiance. I wonder if that's Perhaps because, uh... because Lohan's husband co-produced this film. <sighs> so that is actually quite a good observation yep. um maddie winks at herself in the mirror saying you're marrying paul kennedy she falls asleep then beats the shit out of paul kennedy when he gets into bed to snuggle with her the glaring subtext is that maddie is a staunch virgin because she is not married so that's a right-wing dog whistle right there Remember because she's people... not hopping into bed with her friend's would be fiance and husband. 99 times out of 100, when somebody says it's a dog whistle, they're just kind of nutty. It's just like, no, no one told this journalist, like, hey, hey, stop it. Remember, when this, remember when this was a right-wing dog whistle, guys? The Does it have to be underhanded? It, well, it has to be under, it's supposed to be below your waist. The, it's the circle game. Uh, oh. and, then, and then the okay hand symbol, remember that was, yeah. a, that was a dog whistle, right? So when that's a dog whistle and some guy who runs some business says it outside of his work truck and then gets fired, it's because you, my friend, are the mentally ill one, not the guy who accidentally made a hand gesture outside of his, uh, his car. We need to bring this back, by the way. Mm. Whatever happened to that? Then uh, people started saying it's for 666 and it's actually satanic. So I don't okay. know. Um, it's possible, says this journalist, that Irish wish was made solely to get some kind of secret political message across international boundaries in deep code. Again, who are these people who have these like whiteboards with like the, the string pulled from place to place as they're writing these movies? It's a Netflix movie. You, like and you, if I see one thing about this person talking about QAnon, I'm going to lose my oh, shit. Oh no, she mentioned QAnon. No, I'm not saying, but so, so. She mentioned QAnon. So this, okay, here's the thing. If this is satire, yeah. it's brilliant and I've changed my mind entirely. This oh, person's yeah. a genius. Okay. Actually, we might have fallen for it. I like we it. might be duped, I like honestly. It. But the I'm journalists really these days are so off the rails crazy that I, I really just wouldn't put it past a lot of them to be saying stuff like this. But they did name drop QAnon, in okay. fact. So, yeah, if it's possible to be racist about white Irish people, this movie is. <laughs> and then... After Freaky Friday, Wish Reversal returns everyone back to normalcy, back to the real world. Lindsay Lohan's character walks out of her best friend's wedding. Where are you going? He asks. And she says, to write my own story. Is it's just very is that campy. A dog whistle? Is that a dog whistle? It's to, just Hallmark to the Enlighten, Camp. To the Enlightenment yeah. period and the fact that white Christians are the one who have decided what literacy is? Okay. Mary, is that what it means? <laughs> I saw another think piece written about this movie, Irish Wish, um, from Film in Dublin. They asked, did Irish independence occur in Lindsay Lohan's Netflix film, Irish Wish? An urgent investigation. So <laughs> here, here they ask, why are these strains of rom-coms always so chaste? Did Lindsay Lohan have a nice time shooting in Ireland? Has God abandoned us to a hell of our own making? They are saying that uh, basically this movie undermines Irish patriotism and St. Patrick's mm -hmm. Day, the spirit of the holiday, because Actually, the hunky Irish guy that Lindsay Lohan wishes to marry, in real life, he's British. Uh, I do want to point out that this was making the rounds again because it was St. Patrick's Day the other day. Um, this, old, oh, this old one. Oh, wow. Yes. Love history. I love learning about history. So true. Yeah. I'm, my name is Gen Gemini. And yes. <laughs> I'm teaching you about Irish history. Um, so, yeah. the guy, Is it cultural appropriation for 
a British person to play an Irish person. No, in a because they TV do this show. All, they do this all the time in movies and television. Irish people have to put on British accents. British like, people. You have know to put that on they Irish have accents. a troubled history. Okay. Uh, you know that they have a fraught history. Sean Connery, together. Pierce Brosnan. These actors have had to put on British accents for years. Oh, and then also Lindsay's uh, marriage to said hunky Irish guy is then usurped by a hunky British guy. Yes. So really, this is putting Irish men in the cuck chair, and they're getting cucked by the British guys. Seems reminiscent Again, of the I troubles. I want to know at what point during pre-production all of this was decided by Netflix. Um, I'm sure that Netflix secretly has a crypto fascist agenda. And if you are doubting that, then you're definitely in on the plot with them. So that's it's settled. This is it's cultural settled. colonization on behalf of Netflix. And I won't stand for it. I won't. Do you have any Irish ancestry? I don't. I'm Croatian and Polish. Just a Slav, just, just straight just, up Slav. Yep, that's me. I'm I'm the original oppressed class. I have some ah. Irish ancestry, ah. and honestly, I'm offended. You should be. Okay, let's go, let's finish these super chats. Disco Jen, Jensen said her OF is still active and being promoted. It's all a grift. The devil is a liar. Okay, I, I will say. Okay, <laughs> she she still got some not exactly PG photos up on her Instagram. Do you think a former prostitute would have the best idea of what is considered modest? I mean, I'm just saying, That's if she is trying to figure it out, I honestly, like, I wouldn't put it past her to think, you know, there's nothing risque about this photo of me. She's been naked on the internet, go of course. With, go forward with grace and you can't go wrong. You, won't be, a, you won't be yeah. let down if you go forward with, with grace, but you go forward with both eyes open. Yeah, I mean, I don't understand what you mean by it's being promoted, but it's it's active because of the site's policies is what it looks like to me. But I guess we'll find out. Serenko Productions said the important thing is that in every way, whether from false motives or true, Christ is preached. And because of this, I rejoice. Philippians 1.18. Guys, can we? Uh, yes. Yes, I agree. And guys, let's get a third crisis party. Reading scripture and then yes. screaming at them. Right. Oh, guys, I, I, should we play them the Sydney Sweeney? <laughs> Wait, let's like let's say let's say that it needs its own like special For tomorrow, moment. guys. Yeah. Sydney Sweeney reading the book. She really is like like what was the other thing you saw? She eats ice cream before bed. <laughs> just a nice slice of life. So Sydney Sweeney just decided to say she likes to eat ice cream before bed. I really do believe she just has nothing but guy friends, and she's like, okay, guys, like. How do I just like literally attract everyone? <laughs> and they're like, well, you know, my dream girl would eat ice cream in bed with me. Well, unfortunately, it's only Sydney's Sweeney's fiance who experiences that. Mr. Anderson said refund the profits from spicy content if sincere. No, I don't think she needs to do that. I mean, I, I, don't, <clears throat> I think it's about going forward, right? I just don't think that anyone but god or perhaps a spiritual director or authority like a priest um is allowed to make the benchmarks for what makes someone sincere right because yeah. it's like it's like we talk about when you call someone a grifter you're making an assertion that you know what is in the inner workings of someone's heart, heart yeah. and that is just literally impossible yeah. um so yeah i just don't think that's exactly fair nate said great perspective on redemption you are good people Thank you, Nate. Oh, and also, like, talk about this in, in regards to Andrew Tate, for instance. He made a huge fortune off of porn, okay, that other people were in. He ran this cam site business. He made so much money off of this, and he made money off of porn, which he currently denounces. But nobody is demanding that Andrew Tate gives away all of his money. They think it's the coolest thing about him. <laughs> so I, I, I wouldn't even expect Andrew Tate to do that. I'm only expecting Andrew Tate to say, this thing I did was wrong. Um, you know, I'm sorry, this was destructive to men. It goes against all of my principles that I hold now. So just giving, so giving away all the, so, so let me, wait, I just saw it here. Uh, da, 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 says, yes, Brett, why, uh, why show actual repentance? Sorry, I can't find the comment. Uh, oh yeah, okay, so it's from Mr. Ann, Der uh, Ann Derpson says, of course, Brett, why show actual repentance? Does her giving away all the money, 
that's material stuff like th this is why christianity looks at the heart and not at i mean this is this is why christ came to earth to to renew the law and to to write it on the human heart it's about what's inside not on the outside i like honestly even if someone were a former abortion doctor someone who performed abortions i would not sit here and demand that they give away all of the money they made during their years as an abortionist in order to be sincerely pro-life i literally don't think that matters it would be nice okay that would be great and an exceptional way of you know if you donated it right to like pro-life causes that would be great i guess but i don't think it's someone's moral obligation to prove themselves to the world when it's about who they are in the kingdom of heaven, right? It's it's totally disconnected. And I guess as somebody who's not religious, my perspective would be it's about their behavior going forward, not a chain, uh, not the financial ramifications of their actions past. Mm -hmm. I guess like as long as you go forward and live the the virtues that you are claiming to live now, that's how you prove that you've changed. But that's the point. Like it's a fool's errand because it will never be enough. You could give away all the money and change all your behavior. And just like I said earlier, people will say, well, you're still a whore just because you aren't being a whore right now doesn't mean you will not eventually fall back into whoredom. Right, there okay. are going to be people who gonna say will that say anyways. that no matter what. And, and the so chasing after their acceptance, mm -hmm. chasing after the acceptance of anyone on the internet, it's not worth it. Mm -hmm. Dave Collins said, redemption is possible for most things in life. Being a porn star on OF probably makes future employment and relationships more difficult, but it is not beyond redemption, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, that's the whole point is, you know, you can be forgiven for your sins, but that doesn't erase the consequences of them and that's fine ethan miller said god redeems people scorn choose god shane h wilder said let's just see what happens all sins are forgivable save for sin against the holy spirit De deliberate refusal to accept god's mercy and forgiveness so one of the so, so okay there's another thing somebody said earlier somebody said good job you guys you gave her the attention she wanted by covering this topic okay i Honestly, when I think about what I want to talk about on this show, it's about what I find interesting. Yeah. On a, either a philosophical level, on a human level, on a societal level. What does it mean for the culture? The ramifications. Every time we cover one of these Disney stories, you give Disney free press. The best way, yes, I suppose, would be to not talk about it at all. But then that takes into account, that doesn't take into account the actual commentary that you're making. What you're saying is that by talking about it, it will have only positive ramifications for that person rather than the idea that you can actually sway the opinions of others, whatever those opinions may be, on a given topic. Also, for topics like this, I don't see it as a zero-sum game. I just don't. Yeah. And uh, what I want to talk about here, I don't have any stake in this. Whether this girl goes out and becomes uh, an OnlyFans girl again or continues to do it, it means nothing to me. Like, uh, other than the idea that I believe in uh, forgiveness and the ability to grow as a person, but her individual circumstances, because I don't know her, doesn't really matter to me. The concept matters to me. And talking about it to me is interesting, and I'm not going to stop talking about something just because there could be ramifications that might benefit somebody who might disagree with me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't see how, I mean, if if you're going to go subscribe to her OnlyFans because of this, then um, have at it with zero content on it. <laughs> Pat the Plumber said, anyone watch The Gentleman, Guy Ritchie show? Uh, I'm I'm like half of an episode. I, okay, so guys, I've tried to start both Shogun and The Gentleman. I'll get there. Over the weekend, I just wasn't feeling it. I wanted to watch Tom Selleck made for TV movies. <laughs> Shane H. Wilder said, a theocratic dictator. Is this about Mary? Yes. Mary, yeah. it's actually Lindsay Mary. Lohan is actually secretly trying to get me uh, she works for you. in I power she works as for you the theocratic already. dictator of U.S. Corey Anderson, Hallmark Christmas movies are the best. See Christmas Ranch so bad. It's good. Okay. Someone said that Kate Middleton ran away from the royal family and now she's like in the middle of Montana and she just met a country, country boy who is trying to, to save the local, like, what, save the local coffee shop or something. Could be, that, that could be it. She's the like, local pumpkin she's patch. Like, look, I was just, a, I, was nothing, I was a princess in my former life, and now I just want to be a simple uh, farmhand. Now I just want to be a homesteader. Yeah. 
Shane H. Wilder said the movie just looks like a mid made for TV rom com. It's basic. It's just a movie, not some right wing political Freudian psyop. But it's funnier to think that it is, is what we're saying. True. Bucky Ducky said, I love St. Patrick's Day. Everyone is Irish except Koreans. We're still Chinese. What? I'm not Irish at all, though. I don't know if I ever. Ah, uh, that's not true. I went out at least a couple of St. Patrick's Days in the past. I have. Just, Was it lit? <laughs> From what I remember, yeah, long time ago. <laughs> um, I just didn't. I don't. I don't like drinking alone. So I was just like, yeah. No well, I wasn't thanks. drinking alone. I'd go out on St. Patrick's Day with friends. Yeah. Yeah. Back in the day, and I was never a drinker. Even even in my worst days, I was never like. A, I, I never liked drinking heavily. I was one of those people that just didn't like staying over at other people's houses or passing out. So. Oh, that sucks. Yeah. I was not a drinker. Uh, we got one more here from Shane H. Wilder. We're about three quarters of the way to a third crisis party, guys. If we get a third crisis party. This is we, monumental. Guys, here's what it is. If we get a third <laughs> crisis party, no one will ever do OnlyFans again and we'll have saved the world. Yes. That's what's going to happen, guys. It's, and it's All actually it true. takes is a third crisis party. Uh, Shane H. Wilder says, if y'all uh, if y'all didn't talk about these stories, there would be no show. It is part of pop culture and last i checked this show was called pop culture crisis well it's definitely the crisis part of it like if we talked about rachel zegler it'd be like you're giving rachel zegler what she well, wants well i mean that's the false dichotomy right so everyone says you're giving this person a platform i don't care like i'm here to talk about what i want to talk about i don't give a crap about what other people's platform is it doesn't <laughs> matter to me yeah I, just, I, don't give a crap. I agree all right uh bucky ducky says mary the joke is that no one can tell asians apart oh <laughs> Ha ha. See, like I said, apparently, see, all these people criticizing us talking about this, and I just told them we can stop OnlyFans from ever happening again if we get a third crisis party. Nobody Where's wants to the do it. action? Where's the action? Put all your money comments, where your mouth is. All commentary, no action, guys. I see how it yep, is. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. Before we go, apparently we're not going to save everyone in the world from OnlyFans today. If you want to find... No, no OnlyFans no. women were hurt in the making of this production. Correct. Guys, <laughs> hit the like button on this video and subscribe to this channel if you have not done so already, please. And thank you. Mary, let everybody know where they can find you. You can send me validation on Instagram at Mary Archived, or you can send me hate on X that is also Mary Archived. One more here. High Voltage 75 says, Mr. Brett, what influences your decision on whether or not to wear a hat on the show? Okay, so I wear them more when my hair starts to grow out and I'm too lazy to go get it cut. That is just a fact. It's not actually that right now. My hair is looks fine. pretty much its normal length. But today I just did what decides what hat I wear. That is the hard, uh, that is the hard question because uh, I have a wall of hats and I really only wear the five that I like the most, but that's mostly down to like the fit of them. I have five that fit really, really well <clears throat> and about 10 to or about 20 to 30 that are just depending on how much hair I have, they fit or they don't fit. So it kind of goes between them. Um, and it's a, a difference a between. Oh, go for it. Jake Ramirez said, happy Monday, Bert and Murray. Great show so far. We are so close to saving everyone from a, a We're future We're so Muslim. close to saving the world from degeneracy and sexual deviancy. You hear that guy saying, I'm over here like, look. Literally $2 away. No, I don't know. And I'm, and I'm over here like, look, I don't even know if adult degeneracy is even really all that bad of a thing. Mary's the only one who's certain about this stuff. But you guys are always so certain about these things. I would have thought this would have worked out better. Okay, we're $9 away. Round it up to ten. Ten dollars away. How from much you really want to save souls today? Like, from you know? <laughs> third crisis party. How much do you really care? <laughs> yeah, that's a real question, Mary. That's a real good question. We're doing like Gosh. a what is it? Like a telethon. A telethon. A telethon. <laughs> we're doing a telethon. I we're just gonna that. sit here and we're gonna, we're gonna sit here until all souls are saved. Yeah. We we care about society. <laughs> that's me. That's me. Uh, I. Uh, yeah, I don't know about that. I, 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 I care about my job. That's what I care about these days. All right, guys, if you would like to follow me, you can follow me on Instagram and on Twix at Brett Dasovic on both of those platforms. One we got him! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. We got him. Shane H. Wilder said there will be a new PCC PSA sponsored by the Zinn Council tomorrow. Uh, it is about the dangers of Sheets Tacos. Look, I got into it with uh, a couple of people. Hold on, I gotta fix this here before I go in. Uh, over the weekend, about you know the glory that is Sheets Tacos, and you know I refuse to apologize. I like them; they're awful for me, I'm sure. 
but I like them nonetheless. But this week we made the, the decision we're going to make homemade tacos to dispel all of the bad things that have probably been done to my body from the... I'm going to be real. Tacos in general, overrated. I love tacos. They're, why? Like, they just, just like do. barely... It's like air. It's like a cracker. If cracker was delicious. And then you... Like, even if you buy one, it's a disappointment because there's nothing in it. Mm. I, I, I so much rather get a burrito or like just any other shape of tor tortilla and filling like mm -hmm. than a taco. Mm -hmm. It's such a waste. There's two more here. One from Gordon Shumway says, how about a third crisis party and Brett wears a beret? I don't look good in a beret. Trust me. What, I know this. tried it? I know this because I know my head and I know the shape of my head. It, it won't look good. One more here from uh, uh, Disco Jensen says, society's a little too comfortable with mocking Christianity. I feel the need to crusade. Crusade for what? You know, like the church. Yeah, yeah. Uh, guys, that was the the third crisis party. So you know we what? will have a post credit scene. <clears throat> if we needed, if we needed another crusade, which I'm not saying we do, and I'm not advocating violence There's right a now. Disclaimer at the bottom of the screen. If right we needed another crusade, it would be to take back churches and religious sites back from government ownership. Because that's that's where a lot of them have fallen to. And me, in as years. not at a non as a non religious person who also says, "Yay for less government," I support this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I if learned that in uh, when I was in France. Like all of these, there's so many of these historic churches and stuff that are owned actually yeah. by the state. Um, Fourth crisis party. Are we? Are, thank that's you guys. All of them, guys. At Brett Dasovic on both Instagram and Twix. PCC is here five days a week, guys. <laughs> Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, noon Pacific. We are on Amazon Music, Apple Podcasts, Pandora, and Spotify. If you'd prefer to listen rather than watch. If you want to follow the show on social media, we are on Twix. At PopCulture underscore show. Facebook and TikTok at Pop Culture Crisis and on Instagram at Pop Culture Crisis Pod. One more here from High Voltage Seventy Five says three parties and Brett has to wear a fedora. I am not doing that. I don't look good in in hats other than baseball hats and beanies. Not and even I, just to and I and I don't wear milady. No, no, and I don't wear it. and I don't wear beanies here because that's already trademarked. It belongs to Tim. So guys, uh -huh. we'll be back with another episode tomorrow. We'll see you then. <laughs> Bye. Bye, guys.